Hello, my dear warriors. I hope I'm audible as well as uh, visible. Do let me know quickly in the chat box if I'm audible and visible. Looks like I am. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yes. Uh, welcome to the session. And I hope you're all excited for this power pack, sure shot, high weightage NCRT questions plus your PYQs, MCQs. All the important questions, whatever, uh, right? We are trying to do as many questions as possible in today's lecture, and most of them are very, 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 very important questions uh, for your upcoming CBSE board examination. So make sure that you attend the class properly. Make sure you solve the questions. Some of the questions you might feel that they are very simple, but uh, remember, this is a CBSE board examination. So, if you are preparing for competitive exams like J, NEET, you know, CUET, BITSAT, and all of that, uh, obviously, uh, you were expecting certain level of questions. But remember, this is CBSE. You are expected to remember certain questions. The questions get repeated. NCRT questions are given a lot of priority, right? And you would have seen that in the previous year papers also. Yes, they just change the wordings of the question, but you can expect uh, many questions being repeated uh, from PYQs, NCRT and certain, uh, you know, uh, uh, books uh, which you might be following or even your mock tests or even your pre-board exams. Those papers are also very, very important. So uh, it's going to be around two to three hours uh, this session, not more than that, but we will uh try to solve as many questions as possible and let me also remind you that all the links for your preparation 2024 preparation are there in the description box below uh so be it your uh you know uh ncrt solutions etc and if it is not updated don't worry it will come up also very very soon as soon as uh, i try to end the session okay so i'll be posting the links for the cbsc solution as well as your cbsc board papers right all these things uh, for your additional practice for your physics board examination i'll be posting the links as well as you'll be getting the pdf of all the sessions that we are conducting over here in the description box as well as on the telegram channel yep so we are done with graphs we are done with derivations now it's time for some problems from ncrt pyqs and mcqs and then uh, we are going to go towards mock test uh, that's uh, going to happen tomorrow and uh, the after tomorrow the final revision which is going to start right so i hope you all enjoyed the derivation class it was a long class six hour class i hope you have gone through all the derivations it was almost like covering the entire syllabus only but uh, you know, 100% uh, you are going to get lots and lots of questions from that particular session that six hours is going to be a blessing in your life. Yes. So let's begin with the lecture today and let's start doing some questions starting off with electric charges and fields. Let me also tell you, I will be also showing you and marking back exercise questions for you, which are very, very crucial. Okay. Ready for it. I hope your NCRT is also there in front because in the end, after every chapter, we will mark some questions which are very, very crucial. We'll just go through those questions. Loving it? Like the idea of the class? Chapter, problems, NCRT marking and some brief idea about it and then going to the next chapter. That's the cycle. That's the method. That's the uh, pedagogy which we are going to use today. Yeah, light up the chat box. Let's begin with electric charges and uh, fields, of course, coming up on your screen right now is uh, this particular question for a thin spherical shell of uniform surface charge density sigma. The magnitude of the electric field at a distance R is given by. That's the question. Come on. Let's try to solve this, my dear warriors. Let's try to solve this, my dear warriors. Let's try to understand the diagram first. Just one second. Just right. Just broken. So, okay, what happens is you have a spherical shell, you have a spherical shell and you are outside and you are outside basically. And if you are outside, because this is given to you, R is more than R. So let's say you are at this particular distance. One second. Yeah. Small R, which is more than capital R at this particular point, the 
electric field is just given by k q divided by r square because it behaves like a point charge because it behaves like a point charge that's the idea behind this therefore the electric field will become instead of k you can just write it as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught and remember charge charge can be written down as the charge density into the area charge density is coulomb per meter square into the area which is meter square meter square meter square cancels and you get coulombs so it will be nothing but the charge density into the area of the sphere so 4 pi capital r square and this small r square uh, as it is will come down over here so that should be the answer i hope this is very very clear everybody got this so it is answer b i suppose 4 pi capital r square sigma by 4 pi epsilon not small r square everybody understood uh, this i got it because of the definition of sigma remember sigma is charge per unit area and remember the charge is only there on the surface not anywhere else don't put small r square it is 4 pi uh, it is not small r square it is capital r square that's why charge was sigma into 4 pi capital r square all right i hope this is very very clear let's move on to the next question if you're loving these things make sure you're smashing the like button and giving the guru dakshina as needed by me and any other teacher whom you're watching right you should always give guru dakshina remember this not just to me any teacher two insulated copper charge uh, cop uh, sorry two insulated charged copper spheres a and b have their center separated by certain distance okay of 50 centimeters what is the mutual force of gravity that is the question so let's try to solve this particular question right okay so the charges on the spheres are definitely given to us yes definitely we know the charges on those spheres one second and we are also told that the radius are negligible compared to the distance of separation so you can assume them as point charges the meaning of this is assume assume this as point charges that's all that's the reason why they have given them so both the charges value is given 6.5 into 10 to the power minus 7 6.5 into 10 to the power minus 7 and the distance between them that is also given to us which is 50 centimeter which is 0.5 meters so obviously there will be some electric repulsion and there will be definitely some electric repulsion and that force is given by k q q divided by r square so therefore the force will be k is 9 into 10 to the power 9 and then you will have 6.5 into 10 to the power minus 7 square it divided by your 0.5 which is in meters square that distance yeah so just check it out if it comes out as option number c 1.5 10 to the power minus 2 1.5 10 to the power minus 2 newton it is straightforward these kind of calculative boring questions do come in the in the board examinations all right cool let's go ahead my dear warriors to the next question coming up on your screen yeah this question will be no fun for any competitive exam student because these are very basic questions but for cbse you need to be very quick because you might think sir question is simple but you will not get time to complete the paper that is the reason why you should practice these questions remember cbse examinations are generally if you are not used to it students find it lengthy you have to complete the paper it descriptive questions you have to write it properly if you what just happened just one second yeah if you write very slowly or if you are not used to it then it will take a long long time so be be very careful okay all right moving on to the next question coming up on your screen a conducting sphere is basically charged to 15 micro coulomb another uncharged sphere of radius 10 centimeter is allowed to touch it for enough time and after two are separated the surface charge density on both the spheres will be in what ratio okay all the ba basket is saying all the tamilians assemble yes please do so all the students uh, who are from my birth state of uh, 
Tamil Nadu. I was born in Salem, so special feeling I have always whenever I my train, my flight, anything passes through Salem, I remember my birth city. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. So, uh, remember, this question can be solved in two ways. One way is you basically consider these two spheres. One is a small sphere. Another is a big sphere. And when you touch them, what will happen? The potential of one will be equal to the potential of two. And then you use KQ1 by R1 is equal to KQ2 divided by R2. And then you write Q1 by Q2 is equal to R1 by R2 and continue this with Q1 plus Q2 is basically the original charge by conservation, by conservation. And then solving this, solving this, you will get the answer. Solving this, you will get the answer of Q1 and Q2 both. That is a long way. That is a long way. Yeah. But I'm going to teach you the easy way. My dear students, there is an easy way to solve this question. How many of you know this? There is a simple trick. Whenever you connect two conductors, whenever you touch it, then what happens? What happens is the charge distribution, the charge distribution is inversely proportional, is inversely proportional to the radius of the curvature, is inversely proportional to the basically radius of that curvature radius of that curvature and this charge distribution is directly proportional to the field is directly proportional to the field and i think that is what it is asked uh, the surface charge density is asked okay we are not asked field so that's it so the surface charge density so the surface charge density sigma 1 by sigma 2 will be nothing but r2 by r1 r2 by r1 and what are the radius so first radius is 5, second radius is 10. You can see that 5 and 10. So basically R2 will be 10, R1 will be 5. So it will be 2 by 1. So that should be the answer 2 is to 1. Isn't this much easier way? Isn't this much easier way? Yep. Yeah, so that is the answer to this particular question using an easy approach otherwise you will spend a lot of time by equating potentials and conserving the charges i hope this is very very clear shall we go ahead to the next question my dear students now although this is a simple question there is a big big important takeaway unit of charge everybody will jump and answer i want to see some spam here Students who were not confident, students who are scared, come on. This is the redemption opportunity to all of you to answer the correct, <laughs> yeah, the correct one. Everybody knows the answer, but if I ask you the CGS unit, if I ask you the CGS unit of basically charge, I'll be like, sir, what is that? Well, that is ESU. ESU, I remember that. And you should know the conversion factor. Very good. Everybody posted column, but sometimes the reason why I gave you is they might ask you the CGS unit and what is the conversion factor? And many people do not remember that. That's the reason why I put this. So one coulomb equals roughly 3 into 10 to the power 9 ESU. Remember this. Okay. So this is the reason why I have given you this particular question. The CGS unit of a charge is ESU and just like Newton dyne, Joule or convergence are there, centimeter, meter. This is Coulomb and the CGS unit, which is ESU. Okay. Next question on your screen now. All right. Let me just move this on the side. Okay. An electrical dipole. Let me make myself smaller. Okay. I hope it is fine. Yeah. An electrical dipole is what a pair of electric charges of equal magnitude of, of positive sign negative sign opposite sign separated by distance d etc so all these things are given uh dr swings if i could i will definitely take it but uh, seems little bit tough you can definitely search for my older classes of any topic that you want and watch those classes that will be uh, appreciated in this given time frame, whatever is best possible, I am trying to do, my dear students. Yeah, I am looking like Varun Dhawan. Thank you so much. 
Okay. B. Paka. Done. 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 Dusted. Yes. An electric dipole is nothing but a pair of charges of equal magnitude, opposite sign, separated by actually the word should have been small distance. Uh, that would be a better word over here. Separated by a small distance. So one positive charge, one negative charge. You should also know how the field lines look like. How the field lines look like. You should also know the dipole moment formula, which is nothing but the charge, which is the charge multiplied by the separation separation and what is the direction of the dipole moment what is the direction what is the direction of the dipole moment my dear warriors always remember plus to minus or minus to plus this is one question where everybody gets confused many times i have seen even dropper students get confused yeah Sanjay, surely very soon after the CBSE board examinations. Just let me complete the CBSE 12th standard. Yeah, so it is not from plus to minus. It is from minus to plus. Yes, very good. So it's from minus to plus. Be careful. Electric field goes from plus to minus. Dipole moment always goes from south pole to north pole or negative to positive. Remember that. That is always opposite. So be careful. Such things you will make mistakes. You will lose marks. Examiner will see what is the student writing, will straight away uh, cut the marks, it will lead to a very negative impression. So make sure you are always impressing the exam. Okay. Which orientation? This is descriptive type. Descriptive type. Very good, smiling Harpriya Chuti. Very good. So, which orientation of electric dipole in uniform electric field will correspond to stable equilibrium? Yes, very good, Pitingna, Partha. Come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Vision, yes, come on, let's go. So, which orientation of the dipole in a field would correspond to stable equilibrium? There are three, three important orientations and the most important is the equilibrium's orientation and the dipole moment in stable equilibrium is when the electric dipole moment is in the direction of the field. That means, that means... And show the diagram. Don't just leave the answer like this. Always impress the examiner. Even if it is in words, draw this diagram. And show this is stable equilibrium. And it is when it is in the direction of the electric field. Right? Always do that. If it is unstable, if it is unstable, my dear warriors, then the dipole moment will be opposite to the direction of the electric field. If the question is on maximum torque, if the question is on maximum torque, maximum torque, then the dipole moment is perpendicular to the electric field. Then the dipole moment is basically perpendicular to the electric field. You should, you should draw the diagrams, impress the examiner always, remember that. But don't write unnecessary things. Don't write a big story. You, uh, the, it is in stable equilibrium because potential energy is minimum and potential energy is minimum. That means, uh, you know, the second derivative is positive. So, d square u by dx square more than zero. All those things, if you write, the examiner will understand this is one Lapetu person. This is one person who is going to make me rotate, who is going to make me swing. He is nicely muscofying me, he is buttering me. So, unnecessary things he is writing. So, examiner will cut marks. So, don't write unnecessary things also. Yeah. Is the mass of the body affected when charged? When it is being charged? What do you think, my dear warriors? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. The radio on. Everyone, come on. Let me know. Yes. Is the mass of the body affected when it is charged? The answer is yes, but negligible. Very, very slightly. Because imagine there is a body which is neutral right now. And you can show some diagram also. You can show some diagram also. Example, when it is neutral, there is equal positive and negative charges. But the moment, let's say, you make the body negatively charged make the body negatively charged, meaning there are excess electrons, excess electrons, so therefore the mass will increase. If you make the body positively charged, if you make the body positively charged, that means you have taken away the electrons, that means you have taken away the electrons, that means the mass will reduce, that means the mass will reduce, understood? But the mass of the electrons are very small, that's the reason why 
the changes are in maybe some 30th decimal or 29th decimal like that not much so 30 decimals 31 decimals 29 decimals imagine that 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 small that is very very negligible okay great moving on to the next one rishikesh if i tell you uh, you will pass chemistry will you pass i wish i could have that kind of superpower then i would tell everybody passes or everybody gets all in the rank one what would that situation be like it would be amazing no whatever shreya sir says comes true 100 percent so then to 100 percent i would have said everybody gets all in the rank one everybody has got you know full marks 100 out of 100 nobody is the backbencher last person everybody is a topper board people only will be confused what to do now how to give ranks everybody 100 percent all right so two point charges are place 100 centimeters apart at what point the line joining the charges will the electric intensity be zero okay this is also a very standard important question my dear warriors so what you do is basically draw a line draw a line and you show two charges right over here let's say this is also q this is also q let's say this is r and there is a point where the electric intensity will be zero because both the charges because both the charges are equal exactly it will be at the center exactly it will be at the center because the electric field due to both of them electric field e1 and e1 will cancel e1 and e1 cancels e1 and e1 cancels at the midpoint at the midpoint and that's exactly the point where the net electric field is going to be zero so where is it 50 centimeters from any charge from any charge that should be the answer from any charge 50 centimeters midway but if it is not equal if it is not equal then what to do if it is not equal then what to do my dear warriors if it is not equal so i'll just put it up over here say for example this is q1 say for example this is q2 this kind of question will also come and it has come in many places so this is standard question you should remember this assume it is zero at some distance x so the remaining distance will be r minus x from the other charge r minus x from the other charge correct r minus x from the other charge that is how it will be so electric field due to one and electric field due to two both will be equal electric field due to two will be k q2 divided by r minus x because that's the distance square and electric field due to one will be k q1 divided by x square k k will cancel solving you will get the value of x solving you will get the value of x understood that is what you need to do because k and k will definitely cancel you can take roots on both sides and then you will uh, get the final answer yeah if it is a dipole okay very good question by somebody where is the electric field zero for a dipole let's see how many of you can answer this how many of you can answer this if you take an electric dipole where is the net electric field zero can you tell me will i pass hindi i chose french you are really different amazing you have chosen french and will i pass hindi that is the question amazing super talented students i have amazing i i really am blessed i don't know where i should go and hit my head also one day i will find a wall beautiful wall where i should hit my head and i think i should keep a wall beside me where i mark it shreya sir hits his head over here okay where is it guys nowhere midpoint outside the dipole the answer is answer is nowhere 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 the net field is zero keep this in mind because if you remember 
uh, on the axis there is some field on the equator there is some field at any random point also there is some electric field if you remember it carefully so nowhere be it the equator or be it the axis or any other random angle electric field is non-zero in fact nowhere but if you ask me where is the potential zero then it is basically the equatorial line on the equatorial line the net potential is always zero net potential on the equator equator is the line which uh, bisects both the charges yeah hello shreyas nice to see you Yes, nice name. And we are making this name very famous. Thanks to YouTube, thanks to Cricket, and thanks to the students. Many students of mine, uh, guy students have the name Shreyas and girl students have the name Shreya. Wow. All right. So let's, let's move on. Let's move on to the next one coming up on your screen. What is the basic cause of quantization of the charge? See, I know you will know the concept, but you have to write the answer. That is the main challenge. You might be like, ha, ah, this is obvious. When you are preparing for competitive exam, you're like, sir, this is obvious. It is quantized only. No, come on. What are you saying? But you have to write it properly. So, quantization of charge comes because of the smallest charge which is available to you is the charge of an electron and the charge of an electron is 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 that charge can't be broken down further into smaller charges so any charge on a body is an integral multiple is an integral multiple of that smallest charge which is the charge of an electron and that is the reason why whenever a body gets charged it's always in the integral multiples in the integral multiples of e where this value of e is 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and this is the smallest smallest charge possible this is the smallest magnitude of the charge which is possible understood yeah very good when i come shravesh yeah right right let's move on Let's move on. Next one. Calculate the Coulomb force between two alpha particles. This is standard question. But you should know the charge on an alpha particle. On the two alpha particles. What is the charge on the alpha particle? Let me know in the chat box. Distance is given. Answer is going to be derived from this formula only. K into Q1, Q2 divided by R square. Divided by R square. I already know the value of R. I already know the value of K, which is 9 into 10 to the power 9. What is the value of Q1 and Q2? What is the value of Q1 and Q2? Both are alpha particles. Come on, my dear warriors, between two alpha particles. Yes, alpha particles means it is doubly ionized helium and two positive charges. So it is 2 into electron charge, which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. 2 into 1.6 that's it that is the magnitude of the charge so that is how you will solve this so you can see the value of k is right over here then you will have 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 but two times okay two times this one over here and also again over here this is q2 charge i hope you can see this right over here and then you have r square and then you have r square in the denominator you can see this this is nothing but r square this is r square everybody can see this yes very good r square is also there so k q1 q2 divided by r into r newton that comes out to be 90 newton so i have given all the derivations please check out all the derivations on the safer hand remember all the derivations which i have done in the six hours long class that's what i would say okay don't take risk only don't take any risk okay electrical dipole mo uh, is placed in uniform field with its dipole moment parallel to the field then find the work done in tightening the dipole till its dipole points in the direction opposite orientation of the dipole for which the torque acting on it becomes a maximum orientation on the dipole for which the torque acting on it becomes maximum we have done some part of it some time back the first part i think we have not done so let's do that 
guys for the first part what do we need to do for the first part because the dipole is first of all pointing parallel to the field and now it is going opposite to the field the work done will be the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy of the system basically the change final potential energy formula will be minus pe cos 180 cos 180 because it is anti parallel and initial will be minus pe cos 0 because it is parallel so it will become minus p cos 180 will be minus 1 so it will become plus p minus cos 0 is 1 so it will just remain as minus p only so it will become p minus minus becomes plus so it will become 2 times of p 2 times of p is the work done 2 times of p is the work done so that is the answer for the first question everybody got it very good that's how you are going to write it write it in steps don't skip any step don't skip any step orientation of the dipole for which the torque acting on it becomes maximum so torque is given by torque is given by magnitude wise p e sin theta so for the torque to be maximum sin theta has to be maximum and the max value of sin theta is none other than one so that means theta will be 90 degree so then show the diagram also that the torque will be maximum when the dipole moment is perpendicular to the field so that completes question number two very good so write it down properly just don't write 90 degree and leave off write it down in steps okay otherwise you will be uh, getting the wrong answer okay so that is the answer to this shall we go to the next chapter but before that let me also remind you let me also remind you that you will have to just let me put it up on the screen over here yeah this particular uh, chapter these questions which are there at the back of the exercise so yes so how about this i will share the pdf with the questions marked on this which are the important questions over here right Do, would you like that rather than me marking on the video over here right and also maybe the important lines of ncrt would you like that or do you want me to mark it on the video right now over here what do you think let me know in the chat box quickly let me know in the chat box quickly do you want the pdf yeah do you want the pdf of these questions okay perfect perfect but how many of you have solved at least 70 percent of the back exercise questions yeah okay pdf fine i'll give you the pdf definitely no problem yes how many of you have seen 70 percent of the questions at least back exercise and do you want the solutions pdf also shall i give you the solutions pdf yes i'll give you the solutions pdf also done done that is a free gift from me that is the free gift from me which you're going to get yeah so it will be updated in the uh, description box it will be updated in the description box don't worry about it great great no problems okay okay yes have not touched who is this legend have not touched the ncrt textbook very good congratulations special mention if you have not touched the textbook proud of you i'm super duper happy i mean i like the confidence see confidence has to be appreciated no matter what if you have not touched the textbook that means you are super duper confident so that level of confidence i wish every student had so i think we should all take motivation if you have not touched the textbook and uh, three days before the examination we all should take motivation we should be then like sure without any tension we should go to the examination hall. okay right let's go to the next set of questions coming up on your screen right now get ready for it okay okay right so correct formula uh, for the capacitance in terms of area and the distance d of a parallel plate capacitor in vacuum is what is the correct formula for capacitance in terms of area and distance of a parallel plate capacitor epsilon naught area by d hello sparkle yes yes epsilon naught area by d and if by chance there is dielectric material 
then put k also if 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 material is present if material is present if which material is present dielectric material is present very good d for doctor d for delhi moving on two parallel plate capacitances c and 2c are oh by the way if you are thinking sir will this kind of question come believe me i mean imagine in j means in the january attempt there was a question on mole fraction and that mole fraction question was what is mole fraction it was like i think x1 by x1 plus x2 that's it that that question came so if in j they can ask such questions in cbc also i mean they can ask these kind of questions okay two parallel plate capacitors c and 2c are connected in parallel charge to potential v the battery is disconnected and the space between the plates of the capacitor is completely filled with a constant 3 the potential difference across the capacitor now becomes okay so how do we solve this particular kind of question first of all they are connected in parallel and charged to a potential of v let's understand the diagram first let me draw both the capacitors right over here for all of you this is c this is 2c and both of them are connected to the same battery of voltage v so charge on capacitor 1 will be cv charge on capacitor 2 will be c into 2v now the battery is disconnected and the space between the plates of capacitor c the space between the plates of capacitor c is completely filled is completely filled with a material of dielectric constant 3 so k is equal to 3 is filled over here k is equal to 3 is filled over here now what happens because of that this capacitance will behave like a new capacitor of capacitance how much my dear warriors of capacitance how much my dear warriors 3c because dielectric constant increases the capacitance k number of times so now it will now become 3c and 2c capacitors 3c and 2c capacitors in parallel because the capacitors are in parallel can i convert them into one single capacitor can i convert them into one single capacitor why not just convert them into one single capacitor of 5c because when they are in parallel then the capacitances will just add and it will become 3c plus 2c which is 5c because they are right now in parallel okay now measure the total charge over here what is the total charge over here it is cv plus 2cv which will make it 3cv which is the total charge and this total is going to be conserved is going to be conserved is going to be conserved no no matter what yes very good so the charge on the final capacitor will also be will also be 5 uh, sorry 3cv the charge on that capacitor will also be 3cv because it will be the same charge it will be the uh, char the charge will be same it cannot go anywhere right and then what can i say the voltage across it the voltage across it Uh, is given by q by c because that is the formula voltage is nothing but the charge it is nothing but the charge by the capacitance by the capacitance that is the formula what is the charge it is 3 cv what is the capacitance it is 5 c so c c will cancel what will you get 3 v by 5 3 v by 5 is that there option d got it understood Give over Tamil. Uh, I don't have the PDF because uh, I feel you can just watch the derivation. See, the PDF is there in the NCERT itself. Main thing is just uh, you know see how the derivations are being done. If you write it on your own only, then it will enter your head. That's the deliberate reason why I didn't give any PDF of derivation session because you cannot memorize derivations. You have to see and write it on your own. So please do that. Please do that. It won't take you more than three four hours. Spend those three four hours. okay so i'll repeat over here what we just did first of all remember the capacitors were in uh, you know were given same voltage so this capacitor had cv charge this capacitor had 2 cv charge so the total charge will become cv plus 2 cv which is 3 cv and this charge cannot go anywhere so it has to be conserved now the battery is disconnected and you add some dielectric of constant 3 so whenever you add dielectric material the capacitance will increase that many k number of times so instead of c i wrote it as 3c 
2c remained as it is there is no change over there now the next thing is understand that these two capacitors are side by side their voltages are same so that's why i can connect them in par they are actually in parallel so the equivalent capacitance will be 5c 3c plus 2c is 5c remember the charge which i had calculated 3cv so that charge cannot go anywhere it is still going to be the same correct now to find the new voltage because that is what is asked find the potential difference across the capacitance now becomes because q is cv voltage is charged by capacitance charge capacitance is no substitute you will get the answer got it sir it's in parallel how can we add the charge let me tell you my dear students this charge was here and here and the total charge when in parallel gets added in series it is same in parallel it gets added just like resistors in series current is same and in parallel currents get added kirchhoff's current law i1 plus i2 plus i3 is the total current same way instead of current for capacitors it is charges q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus q4 is the total charge got it is that clear i hope these confusions are gone this question is very very important from your board point of view and even competitive exam point of view all right got it clear give me a thumbs up great great they are in parallel remember currents in parallel add charges in parallel add currents and charges in series are same voltages in parallel are same voltages in series add exactly opposite exactly opposite jessica i made a video yesterday please watch that it's a big six hour class so all the derivations i have done there is nothing like important derivations the derivations even if you count it it won't be more than 20 30 derivations so please do those 20 30 derivations out of 20 30 don't ask me which is important let's say i tell you see many youtubers will make such videos out of 30 40 derivations they will give you a list of 10 derivations fine it might come then one derivation or two derivations will come from the ones which are not taught then what will you do then you will be like the person will be like see i told you this derivation will come anybody can tell that yeah anybody can tell even if a person is not a teacher, I can just akkad wakkad bambai bo or inky pinky ponky, uh, I had a donkey, the donkey died, we cried. I can do something and I can say these five derivations will come. Then you will, you, I can always say that, yeah, see, I told one of these derivations came. Then you will also cry because, you know, that other derivation did not come. So that is why don't uh, look for such videos right now. Just go through all the derivations. I have given you all those things. Okay. Okay. What is this? A variable capacitor and an electroscope are connected in parallel to a battery. A reading of the electroscope would be decreased by. A variable capacitor and an electroscope are connected in parallel to a battery. The reading of the electroscope will be decreased by. What do you think is the answer for this? Come on, my dear warriors. What do you think is the answer for this? A variable capacitor and electroscope are connected in parallel to a battery. The reading of the electroscope will be decreased. Basically, electroscope, uh, you know, is a device which measures, you know, your charges and all of that. So, yes, this PDF, you will get it TNT Praveen after the lecture is over. When you, when you basically decrease the battery potential because the charges will decrease. Remember, Q is equal to CV. Remember, Q is equal to CV. So, when you decrease the voltage, charge will decrease. So, the reading of the electroscope will also be decreased. Reading of the electroscope because electroscope measures the amount of charge. Electroscope measures the charge on anything. I hope this is clear. Electroscope, that gold leaf electroscope, two filaments are there and you know they repel, attract each other based on their charge. That is what an electroscope is. Got it okay uh it's not any level of question it is cbs level of i mean uh nta is uh these days making question papers such that i i really don't know what is the difference between now cuet uh j -E, neat they are making almost same kind of papers especially for physics and chemistry i'm not saying for maths because maths is not there in neat and biology is not there in j but if you see all the papers roughly same level such lullu questions they are giving 
Imagine students are easily getting 70, 80 marks in J in the January attempt last year also in NEET. The paper was very easy. So, you know, NTA has brought down the level of physics and chemistry by a great deal. They have blurred the lines. The capacity of a pure capacitor is 1 farad in DC circuit. Its effective resistance will be how much, my dear warriors? Infinite, 0, 1, 2 ohms. For a pure capacitor, uh, it's 1 farad at DC circuit. It's effective resistance. Now, you know, they have combined this question with AC. If you notice, uh, in, in AC circuits, you had something called as XC, capacitive reactance, and it was 1 by omega C. When you talk about DC circuit, the value of omega is basically zero. The value of omega is basically how much? Zero. So if the value of omega is zero, that means over here, the denominator will be very close to zero. That means the value of XC will be what? The value of XC will be what, my dear warriors? Won't it be infinity? Won't it be infinity? It is going to block the current. It is going to block the current. So infinite resistance, that is the answer. Yes, it is going to block the current completely. Remember, whenever you have capacitor in a branch, no matter whether there is a resistor, whether there is a battery, it can't do anything if there is a junction. If I make so, you will always see that the current in this particular branch, the current in this particular branch will be zero because it has infinite ohm resistance. It blocks. It blocks the current in steady state, in steady DC voltage or current. Okay. You should know this. Why is omega zero? Okay. Think of it like this. In AC circuit, the current goes up and down basically varies. But if the variation is only not there, if it is always constant, Meaning, what is the rate at which the voltage or current changes the direction? I will say zero. It is not changing only. So that's why omega is zero for DC. Understood? So for DC, omega is zero. For AC, omega can take any value. 1 hertz, 5 hertz, whatever you want. Yep. Great. Shall we go ahead? Yep. In circuits, a difference in potential from one point to other is often called as in circuits. In circuits, the difference in potential from one point to the other point is often called as what? Volts, AT, field, voltage. Well, it is basically called as voltage. It's not volts. Volts is the unit. We call the potential difference as the voltage. Yeah, it is option D, not option A. Students got confused. What is the difference between volts and voltage? What is the voltage of this, uh, uh, you know, socket? What is the voltage requirement for washing machine? When I, uh, when I say the voltage requirement is 220 volts, that means it is a potential difference from one point to the other. Right. What is the geometrical shape of equipotential surface due to a single isolated charge? We did this in the graphs. We did this in the graphs uh, session. If you attended it day before yesterday, you would know this answer right now. Yeah, please attend this class properly. You will see that most of the questions which are going to come in the paper will be from this particular session itself. The geometrical shape of equipotential surface due to a single isolated charge is going to look like this. Yeah, concentric shells, concentric spheres. What are these lines? These lines are electric field lines. Electric field lines and the electric field lines are always perpendicular to the equipotential lines. That's why you can see they are circular in nature. So the equipotential surfaces are basically just concentric circles. Yeah, actually speaking, they are not circles. They are spheres or shells because in three dimension, it is not just in one line. It is in 3D. So, you know, anywhere you go at the same distance, either in, out, up, down, left, right, left, up, whatever direction you go, you will see the potential will be same at the same distance. So it is a concentric shell. That will be the right word over here. Okay. Great. 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 So that is why in concentric spheres, that word is given. Okay. Don't put concentric circles. I would not appreciate it so much. Draw equipped potential surfaces due to a single point charge. We just did it exactly like this. So the same kind of question might come. And mark, label, label everything properly. This is the charge over here. And this is, you know, 
uh, electric field lines which are going out or coming in. So mark and label those diagrams properly. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Uh, Mohamad Fawad, VBA is nothing but voltage difference between the two points B and A. It is nothing but VB minus VA. That's all. It simply put the voltage difference between the two points. And you can use Kirchhoff's laws to find out the difference between the two points voltage. It's basically the summation of IR, current into resistance. If sometimes EMFs are there, the summation of EMFs, right? So all those things might be there in between the paths uh, of a current. So you just do that, you will get the answer. Check out, check out, you know, my current electricity class, you will get the answer. Okay. Two charges are placed at two points. Depict the equipotential surface of such a system. Drawing these questions, graphical questions, again, very, very popular, very, very popular with the board examiners, board paper setters. Two charges are placed and you can see it's a dipole. That's a specific situation which we are all aware of. So you have a positive charge, you have a negative charge. You know how the electric field lines go. You know how the electric field lines go. The electric field lines go like this. The electric field lines basically go like this. How will the equipotential lines go? So it will be always perpendicular to it like that. So make sure you show them properly like this. These are your equipotential surfaces. And when you are very close, it will be circular in nature. And when you are very close, it will be circular in nature. Okay. So this is how the equipotential surfaces will look like. Right. This will be zero volts. This will be V1, V2, V3 on this side towards the negative side and this will be v1 v2 v3 like that for the positive side that's all okay that's all depict the equipotential surface of the system this is the answer for this got it my dear warriors clear oh perfecto shall we go ahead to the next one okay a slab of material a slab of guys concentrate on the class we guys are deviating for the class and asking unnecessary questions now so any doubt, please ask it after the class is over, uh, you know, in the comment section. I'll try to reply to as many comments as possible. Concentrate on the class and do one favor. Yeah. Have you smashed the like button or not yet? Do that. Come on. One free session you're getting the entire marathon you're getting. Smash the like button. And yes, please also subscribe to the channel so that you do not miss any of the further classes. Okay. A slab of material, dielectric constant K, has some it has the same area as that of a plates of a parallel plate capacitor, but the thickness is d by two, where d is the separation between the plates. Find out the expression for the capacitance when the slab is inserted between the plates of the capacitor. Great. Now this derivation I can show you, but otherwise I will give you an easy way to do this and show this to the examiner. First of all, draw the diagram properly. Okay, show the capacitor like this show the capacitor like this and also show a slab which is filling in like this of uh, value of how much k and the thickness is basically d by 2 the remaining d by 2 is just air the remaining d by 2 this is just air remember that and the area of the plates is basically a now this arrangement is just like saying this arrangement is just like saying, you know, there are two capacitors in series. One capacitor is like this. One capacitor is like this. And the other capacitor over here, like this. This capacitor has air in it. This capacitor has dielectric material in it. That's all. That's the only difference. And these two basically are going to be in series. These two are basically going to be in series. What is the capacitance of this part which has the dielectric material? It is epsilon naught k a by d by 2. So it will become basically 2 times of epsilon naught k a by d. Similarly, similarly, ah. Uh, this part which has air, it has a dielectric material constant of 1 because air is constant 1. So, epsilon naught A, distance between the plates will be again D by 2. So, it will become 2 epsilon naught A divided by D. 
So this is C1 and C2. So to find the equivalent capacitance in series, remember the formula is 1 by Cs is 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2. That is the formula which you'll use. So reciprocal of this guy, reciprocal of this guy will be D on the top and you will have 2 epsilon naught Ka and reciprocal of this guy will be D by 2 epsilon naught A. Then just add them. Many things are common like D is common. Epsilon naught 2 times A is also common. You will just have 1 by K plus 1. That's it. That is 1 by Cs. Remember that. So better to take LCM my dear warriors. So the LCM will look something like this. It will be D into 1 plus K. The whole thing divided by 2 epsilon naught A and into K. 2 epsilon naught A into K. So Cs will be, Cs will be, take the reciprocal of it. Take the reciprocal of it, 2 epsilon naught A K divided by D into 1 plus K. D into 1 plus K. Understood how to do this problem? Understood my dear warriors how we did this question? Okay. I have written down the detailed solution. Both these capacitors are one after the other. That's why it's in series. And remember in series, use this formula. Don't just add it. It's not like resistor. It's opposite to that of resistors. Opposite to that of resistors. Very good. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Yeah. All righty. Moving on to the next one coming up on your screen. Two capacitors are there. They are connected to a battery. Initial switch is closed. After some time, it is left open and the dielectric slab of some is in inserted. How will the charge potential difference between them be affected? Now, if you notice, this particular question is just like this. This particular question is just like, you know, this particular question, which I just did over here. Where did it go? I think it was at the start. Yes, this one is the same thing you can see the diagram was not given here but in that question the diagram is given charges are asked potential is asked what voltage is given to the capacitors initially you disconnect it connect a switch all these things so that's why these kind of questions become very very crucial for you to solve it's the same method to solve these questions same method to solve these questions yeah so the two capacitors you know, initially the switch is closed. After some time, the switch is open and dielectric slab is inserted to fill the space between them. How will the charge potential difference between the plates be affected after the slabs are inserted? Remember, these two capacitors, the key idea is these two capacitors are in parallel. Are in parallel. That is first key idea. Second idea is that, second idea is that when you add some material, the new uh, capacitance is always k times the old capacitance when a slab is inserted. These are the two major concepts which you will have to use. These are the two major concepts which you will have to use. Is that very, very clear? Everyone? Yes, Venkata Ramana. Obviously, the PDF will be given to you and it is uh, going to be shared on Telegram. Okay. Right. Will you be able to do this? I have put the solution on the next slide itself. Right. Let's go to the next one of current electricity. Let's go to the next one of current electricity, my dear warriors. Yes, Sarah, you will easily score 45 plus if you go through my graphs, if you go through my derivation sessions, if you go through this session, 45 is like very less. I am so telling you will go get even more than that. So please go through all these sessions, this five to six day challenge, which we are doing on this particular channel. Go through all these sessions. You will definitely be able to score more than 45, 100%. Yes, graph session is very important. In fact, we revise the entire physics graphically in that graph session. Okay. If you take an ammeter with an unknown resistance in series, it is connected across two identical batteries. When the batteries are connected in series, the galvanometer records one ampere. And when the batteries are in parallel, the current is 0.6 ampere. So what is the internal resistance of each battery? Okay, so ammeter with an unknown together with an unknown resistance in series is connected across the two identical batteries, uh, you know, of EMF 1.5. And the batteries are in series, so let's just draw those 
two batteries first of all they are in series remember that both of them are 1.5 volt uh, resistance is unknown resistance is unknown 1.5 volt and uh yes unknown resistance is also there unknown resistance is also there uh, okay and this ammeter is also there and this ammeter is also there right something like this this is the basic diagram in the first situation then the current is found out to be one ampere the current is found out to be one ampere now how do i get this current current is basically the total emf upon the total resistance of the circuit the current is one ampere the total emf is 1.5 plus 1.5 the total resistance will be r plus small r plus small r that means it will become 2r that means it will become basically 2r is that right my dear warriors so this is one equation so from this what do i get from this what do i get i get r plus 2r two small r 1.5 plus 1.5 is basically 3 this is the first thing which i get by solving for the series part then when the batteries are connected in parallel that means you know something like this that means something like this okay right over here like that when these batteries are connected in parallel you can you can assume it to be a single battery you can assume it to be a single battery and the equivalent emf will still be 1.5 volts you can use the formula you can use the formula and the internal resistance use the parallel resistance formula r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 because they are in parallel because they are in parallel right so basically basically use the parallel resistance formula and you will get it as basically r by 2 if each of them is r each of them is e then this is emf wise it will still be e only resistance wise it will be r by 2 and now this is connected and now this is connected to your uh, external resistance capital r and your ammeter over here just as it is like over, like so okay so this is how the diagram will look like so the reading shown in the second case is how much 0.6 amps 0.6 amperes so how do i know this current current is again the total emf the total the total emf upon the total resistance what is the current 0.6 what is the emf 1.5 volt what is the total resistance r plus small r by 2 cross multiply so it will become 0.6 times of r plus 0.6 multiplied by r by 2 is equal to 1.5 shift the decimal it will become 6r plus 6 by 2 will make it 3 small r is basically 15 okay 6 by 2 is 3 so divide by 3 further so it will get uh what is it 2r plus small r is equal to 5 so now i have two equations this is equation number 2 and from here i got equation number one from e equation number one so solving equation one and two solving these equations one and two from equation one and two you can find the value of r as well as small r how many why r by two because they are in parallel observe this carefully these two resistors are in parallel combination so in parallel what will happen parallel what will happen r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 so r r by r plus r that will make it r by 2 is that okay that is the formula for emf that big formula is there for emf that big formula is there you can use it you will still get the emf as 1.5 emfs won't add it won't have any other variation it will simply be e only it will not change yes is that clear so the equivalent i have converted these two batteries they are in parallel into one single this is equivalent battery this is not one battery this is equivalent equivalent parallel cell equivalent parallel cell got it now yeah the saddest part is it is mcq okay most likely even if this question comes it if it comes it should be for a good amount of marks at least three marks to four marks okay i feel then it is 
going to do justice. Right? Shall we go ahead to the next one coming up on your screen? Okay. The resistance of a metallic conductor increases due to what? Increases due to what? Come on, my dear students. Okay. Uh, Srinath, if there are two wires which are carrying wires in the same direction, there will be attractive force between them. Yes, that is due to magnetic field. Yeah. Right. Due to magnetic field, if they are carrying the same current in the same, uh, sorry, current in the same direction, definitely they will be attracting each other. If they are opposite directions, then they'll be repelling each other. Right. Okay. Come on, my dear warriors. Think about the next question. The resistance of a conductor increases due to what? The increase in the rate of collisions between the carriers and the vibration of the atoms between them. We discussed this. In fact, you know, uh, in the current electricity chapter as well. So, when you increase the temperature, the thermal collisions increase, the rate at which they collide increases. Also, the atoms begin to vibrate. They leave very less space for the electrons to pass by. That is the reason why this happens. Correct. Next one. Uh, in this particular figure, an ideal voltmeter is connected across a uh, 400, uh, sorry, 4000 ohm resistance. It reads 30 volts. If the voltmeter is connected across 3000 ohms, then uh, what will it read? That is the question. Okay. Come on. Let's see if you guys can figure this bit out. It's not that difficult. For 4000 ohm, it reads 30 volts. For this ohms, how much will it read? This is an ideal voltmeter. This is ideal. So, it measures the true voltage. It has infinite resistance. Do you see one important thing? These two resistors, are they in parallel or are they in series? I find they to be in series. Both of them are in series, right? That means in this as well as this, won't the current be same? Won't the current be the same? That is the criteria for uh, resistors or capacitors, whatever inductors in series, current, charges, everything are same. Very good. And what is current? Current is current is nothing but voltage, voltage meaning potential difference divided by resistance, divided by resistance. So what is the voltage V1? What is the resistance R1? What is the voltage V2? What is the resistance R2? For both of them, initial voltage, what is it? 30 for a resistance of how much? 4000 ohms. What is the voltage? Second time, I don't know. What is the resistance? It is 3000 ohms. Got it? Awesome. Awesome. So, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Yes. So, there you get V2. V2 is basically 30 into 3 divided by basically 4. That is 90 divided by 4, which is 22.5 volts. That should be the answer, which is option number A. Understood? Very good, Vagalakshman, Badrinath. Congratulations. You guys have given the right answer. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep typing. Keep chatting. I want everybody to answer all these questions. Don't think that these are not for me. This is not going to come. When you see these questions for 4 marks, for 3 marks, for even objective, doesn't matter. Don't think about marks right now. Just think about, you know, getting the concepts right, solving the problems. That's all. Uh, potentiometer not there. Sorry. One second. Hmm. According to Kirchhoff's loop rule, the absolute sum of the charges, algebraic sum of the charges, uh, algebraic sum of the charges, algebraic sum of the charges in the potential around closed loop must be negative, positive, zero. Okay, very simple statement. I think everybody should be able to answer this within few seconds. Within few seconds, you should be able to answer this. Come on. What do you think is the correct answer for this? The absolute sum. I'm giving you a free question. Just one second. Let me just get some water and come. Just one second. Meanwhile, keep answering. Thank 
Come on, I'm seeing all your answers, all your chats. B A C D. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, perfect. Many of you got it correct. Answer is B. Answer is B. Very good, Ritigna Bharat. Awesomeness. Finally, you guys spammed. <laughs> correct. Let's move on. Plot the graph showing variation of current versus voltage for the material GS. Now, what is this? This is semiconductor actually, but yeah, it's come over here. So, uh, you know, if you notice, uh, you know, uh, this particular graph, it is basically a non-linear. And this example is there in NCRT while explaining Ohm's law. And I have told this to you, uh, you know, even in the graphical part session that only for Ohmic devices, it is a straight line. But for non-Ohmic devices, it is a curved line. It is basically a curved line. So, only for ohmic devices, it is a straight line. For non-ohmic devices, for non-ohmic devices, it is a non-linear curve. And this is basically not a conductor. This is a kind of a semiconductor device. Semiconductor device. And for semiconductors, you will see the graphs are always non-linear. Okay. So, keep this in mind. Yes, very good. So, this graph is also given in NCRT. You just show some non-linearity. It is just non-linear. If you show that, that is more than enough. All right. Great. Now, IV graph for a metallic wire at two different temperatures, T1 and T2 is shown in the figure below. Which of the two temperatures is lower? And the reason is also asked. So, give reason kind of question, my dear students. Give reason kind of question. Come on. For insulators, no current will pass only. So, voltage versus current graph, the graph will be zero always. No current is passed through insulators. Right? That is why the name only came insulators right the graph will be very simple okay so see it's a metallic wire that means it's a conductor so for conductors what happens for conductors what happens as the temperature increases the resistance also increases if you look at the graph over here the slope of this graph the slope of this graph is current by voltage so voltage is nothing but ir ii will cancel so it will be r so, hence the slope is 1 by resistance. So, the graph which has higher resistance will have lesser slope or I can also say the one which has more temperature will also have less slope, will have less slope. So, the one with more slope has low temperature, the one with less slope has higher temperature. Okay. So, that's how it is. So, T2 will be more than T1 because this has less slope. The T1 has more slope over here. That is the reason why I can immediately say T2 is more than T1. Got it, everyone? Because slope of 2 is less than the slope of 1. It is inversely proportional. That's what we saw. Cool. So let's go ahead to the next question, my dear students, coming up uh, on your screen. Two wires of same diameter but different materials are joined in series across the battery. If the number of density of the electrons is twice in that of Y, then the find the ratio of the drift velocity in both of them. Find the ratio of the drift velocity in both of them. Come on, guys. The wires have the same diameter but materials are different and they are joined in series across the battery. Okay. So, current will be same. That is the main idea. That is the main idea because they are joined in series across the battery. What does that mean? It just means that the current is same. Current is same. Because they have the same diameter, that means area is going to be the same. We know that the drift velocity formula is I is equal to NVDR because now current is same. And also area is same and electron charge is anyways a constant. Can you not see N into VD is basically a constant. N into VD is basically a constant. So VD 
is inversely proportional to n vd is inversely proportional to n so vd1 or i can just say vd of uh, x upon vd of y is ny by nx ny by nx so it is clearly mentioned the density of uh, electrons in x is twice that of in y is twice as that of in y so this should be the ratio 1 is to 2 this should be the ratio 1 is to 2 that is the answer exactly exactly no this is this is not the lead paper session this is a sure shot high weightage important questions of ncrt everything so that is why the ratio is going to be 1 is to 2 vd x is to vdy so you will write the answer remember always block the answers i was not blocking the answers before just because i want to cover the questions um, at speed at length so make sure in the actual exam you block the final answer never leave it as it is okay next important thing for this wheatstone's bridge as shown using kirchhoff's law obtaining its balancing condition okay so this is a part of derivation remember that you have to know the derivations that's the reason why i gave this to you please check out my derivation se uh, session use kvl i have kept the derivation right over here for all of you you should know these derivations sometimes these questions directly come this was repeated many times so that is why i'm saying this is important derivation from this chapter okay okay great great let's move on now to next question okay three resistors two four and five are combined in parallel what is the total resistance of the combination the combination is connected to a battery and negligible resistance determine the current through each resistance and the total current drawn from the battery this can be like a three marker question or four marker question so depending on how they want to uh, you know give it see guys over here uh, for the first part because they are connected in parallel right so just use this formula one by rp is equal to one by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 so you can clearly see the lcm is nothing but 20 2 goes with 20 10 times 4 goes with 25 times 5 goes with 24 times so it will be nothing but 10 plus 5 15 plus 4 19 so 19 by 20 so the equivalent resistance will be nothing but 20 divided by 19 ohms 20 divided by 19 ohms yes that is the first answer which we just got that is fine so first part is done and whenever you get an answer block it i will not block every time now but you should know it. second time if it is connected to a battery of in negligible resistance so what is the total current drawn from the battery it's better uh, to use ohms law over here so v is equal to i r p so voltage is 20 current is i which i don't know resistance is 20 divided by 19 so therefore what is the current my dear warriors 20 20 cancels it will be 19 amperes current will be 19 amperes you can again block this also you can again block this also okay so this is also done but they are also asking find the current through each resistor that is also asked total current we figured it out total current we just figured it out but what about the individual currents now for that you need to use kirchhoff's current law remember 19 ampere will be i1 plus i2 plus i3 number one also i1 will be the total voltage by that resistance r1 by that particular resistance r1 total voltage was 20 that resistance that resistance was 2 ohms resistance was 2 ohms so it will be nothing but 10 ampere similarly i2 will be total voltage by that resistance so it will be 20 divided by what is that resistance 4 so 20 by 4 which means it will be 5 amperes and the last one i3 will be v by r3 and that is 20 by last resistance was 5 ohms so it will be 4 amperes the good thing is if you notice if you add all of them 10 then 5 and then 4 you get back 19 amperes you get back 19 amperes which is the total current my dear warriors which is nothing but the total 
current right over here. So 19, you can just verify this. It is not needed in the exam, but this is just for your reference. Kirchhoff's current law can be applied. So this can be a proper lengthy question for all of you. So this part is also done and dusted. Right? Are you enjoying this session? Are you loving this session? Let me know guys. Are you seeing so many kind of questions? It's like a very good practice of all the numericals of all the things which can be asked in the exam. So guys, pay full attention, give your full energy, give your full concentration for this session. Okay. Moving charges and magnetism coming up on your screen. Magnetic field at the center of the circular coil of radius 1 centimeter carrying current of 4 amperes is how much? Look at this. Now, for this, what you need to do is that observe carefully. But this is what you need to do. Whenever such a question comes with an arc, the formula for a coil, we know it is mu naught i pi 2r. What you do, check how much of the coil is present. 90 degree is missing, 3 fourth is present, 3 fourth is present, correct? Yeah, so just multiply by 3 fourth, just multiply by 3 fourth. Why? Because this is 3 fourth of a coil, if you notice. This is 3 fourth of a coil. This 1 fourth, 90 degree is missing. This is 3 fourth of a coil. So that's it. This is 3 fourth of, 3 fourth of the entire coil. This particular part was the magnetic field due to the coil. This particular part was the magnetic field due to the entire coil. Complete loop. That's it. Now you know all the values. Just substitute the end well, uh, things and you will get the answer. Cool. Understood. How to do this? You get the answer as 2 pi into 10 to the power minus 5. Radius is given. 1 centimeter. Current is also given. So 3 by 4. Mu naught value is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7. Current was 4 amperes. Radius is 1 centimeter. That means 10 to the power minus 2. That's it. Solving this, you will get 2 pi into 10 to the power minus 5, which is C option. 2 pi into 10 to the power minus 5 Tesla. Great. Great. Bio Savard's law, McMillie, I have done that uh, in the derivations part. Uh, just check out my derivations class. I have also uh, shown the graphs related to uh, Bio Savard's law in the graphical session. Okay. But if you want uh, further revision, We'll be doing it on Sunday. And if you want a detailed class, I have already done it on the channel. Just, uh, you know, search on this particular channel. You will find an older section. Okay. If you want any conceptual clarity. Magnetic moment of a single turn current loop of aluminum wire of area A carrying current I in a wire of diameter D is how much? This is the question. Come on, my dear students. What is the magnetic moment of a single turn current loop of aluminum wire of A carrying current I in a wire of diameter D? See, if you have a loop, if you have a loop and it is told to you, there is some area inside over here. There is some area inside over here and that area is basically A. That area inside is a and the current inside the loop is i then the magnetic moment magnetic moment is given by n i a number of turns it's a single turn so n is 1 into i into a so it is just going to be i a if you are wondering what about the diameter sir understand the diameter is of the wire itself that has no role to play it's that loop which is there, right? That loop which is there, which is that coil, which is going like this, which is carrying that current I. So what they have given you is the diameter of that wire. This is not going to be dependent. It is independent. It is independent. It is independent. It is independent of the diameter. So don't even bother writing that D. It is just simply I A. Yeah. Got it? Clear? Last question answer was 6 pi, is it? Was there a mistake over here in the question? 
let's just check four four cancels yeah actually your answer should be six five you're right yeah i think the answer marked here is wrong the answer should be six five you're right so maybe i will just change this slide over here and shall i make it six five then will that work okay let me can just delete this slide yeah correct guys that is the correct answer you are right i think there was a calculation mistake in that particular slide yeah hmm. okay i have changed the answer is that fine thank you for pointing it out i changed it don't worry uh no we will not use bo severs law for this question we can directly use the formula don't use bo severs law unnecessarily it will make it very lengthy it will make it very lengthy why do you want to do that it is like reinventing the wheel you want to do the derivations again it will make it lengthy so just do it like this remember magnetic field is always the fraction of the coil fraction of the coil which is 3 4 1 4 2 5 1 6 1 4 1 3rd into the magnetic field due to one complete coil so that will give you a magnetic field due to an arc magnetic field due to an arc so that is the simple way of doing it okay according to ampere's law what do you think this is very straightforward i want everybody to answer this question everybody spam it quickly everybody spam it quickly right away right now if you have not yet yeah if you have not yet like the session start liking the session it means a lot when you do that thank you so much thank you so much come on come on come on come on my dear students come on come on come on come on what is the answer very good finally finally spamming started b dot dl is equal to mu not i that is your ampere's loop law mu not into enclosed current correct -o. moving on the scale of a galvanometer contains 25 divisions it gives you a deflection of one division on passing this much current the resistance in ohms to be added to it so that it may become a voltmeter of 2.5 volts is conversion of conversion of a galvanometer into a voltmeter remember that okay so it has 25 divisions clearly mentioned and one division gives you how much current 4 into 10 to the power minus 4 so first of all find out i max first of all find out i max what is the maximum current if one division can give you 4 into 10 to the power minus 4 25 divisions will give you 25 into 4 into 10 to the power minus 4 amperes 25 fours are 100 so 100 into 10 to the power minus 4 amperes so that will make it 10 to the power minus 2 amperes is the maximum current which can flow through it next important thing when you convert a galvanometer into a when you convert a galvanometer into a voltmeter wow just doesn't want to be a circle okay when you convert a galvanometer into a voltmeter you connect a resistor in series you connect a resistor in series the galvanometer has 100 ohms right and the maximum current that can pass through it the maximum current that can pass through it is 10 to the power minus 2 amperes right this current can pass through it and we do not know the resistance which has to be connected in series but you want to convert it into a voltmeter of 2.5 volts of 2 point basically 5 volts perfect yeah they can ask they can ask definitely this time in je imagine there was a question saying mark the laws maxwell's law, uh, sorry gauss law which one or uh, mps law which one uh, gauss law and magnetism which one that kind of question came in my the following just those three four laws of maxwell equation and on the right hand side the equation if that can come in j cbse can ask much simpler questions as well okay now just write v is equal to ir that's it you will get the answer v is equal to ir the total voltage is 2.5 the total current is 10 to the power minus 2 the total resistance uh, will be 100 
plus r basically 100 plus r so take 10 to the power minus 2 on the other side take a 10 to the power minus 2 on the, the other side what will it become 250 250 will become 100 plus r so r will become 150 ohms r will become 150 ohms which is the correct answer got it yeah Yes, you can complete your 11th standard syllabus after boards also. Don't worry. Now concentrate on board exams. Don't think about 11th standard. I have forgot what to do now. That is not your concern. Concentrate on the board exams. Okay. Straightforward answer. A wire of length L is placed in a current perpendicular to the field. The total force on the wire is the total force on the wire is how much? Come on. The total force on the wire is how much? Think, think, think. The total force on the wire is how much? Come on. Yes, LB by I, ILB, ILB, IB by L. Yes, it is just ILB. Chumma, the questions, options are confusing. Nothing more, nothing less. It is actually simple. Actual vector form is I, L, cross, B. Remember that. That is the force. And if you talk about charge, it is Q, V, cross, B. These are your Lorentz forces. Lorentz force, which you should know. Lorentz force. And in fact, if there is an electric field, then there is Q into E bar also. You should know these formulas. Okay. What is the unit of magnetic permeability? Okay. C for capto. Thank you, Sanvi. Thank you, Krishna. So much. Yes. What do you think is the unit of magnetic permeability? Yes. How will you derive it? That is the question. Answer is Tesla meter per ampere and all of that. But how will you get the correct answer is the main thing. You can get it from any formula. In fact, if you have to derive it, let's say the magnetic field formula is mu naught into current divided by 2R. If you look at this formula, mu naught will become 2BR, 2BR divided by current. Therefore, the unit, the unit of mu naught will be, mu naught will be, 2 is a constant, so nothing over there. Tesla for magnetic field, R is in meter and current is in ampere. Current is in ampere. So, Tesla meter per ampere, that is the answer. Understood? Got it? How to derive it? So, if you don't remember, it's okay. You have to remember a formula which associates permeability or that co physical quantity. From that, indirectly, you can derive the uh, units. So, don't get scared. Sir, I don't remember it. It's okay. Perfectly fine. Nobody is asking you to remember. Okay. Under what condition the force acting on a charge moving through uniform magnetic uh, field is minimum? Okay. Come on, Lorentz force condition this is, Lorentz force condition this is, under what condition is the force acting on a moving charge through a magnetic field, charge is moving, so velocity is not zero, but the force is minimum. Well, the direct formula of the force is Q, V, B, magnitude wise, sine theta. So, if the force has to be minimum, Charge is not zero, velocity is not zero, magnetic field is not zero, sine theta is minimum and the minimum value of sine theta is zero. That means theta is zero degree or 180 degree. Yeah, very few people wrote the correct answer. Very good Krishna and M. Yes, it's not zero. It is both zero or 180 degree. So that is why parallel or anti-parallel. If you just write parallel, maybe you will lose half mark. Or if the examiner is not in the mood, maybe they will cut full marks also. Because sine is 0, both for 0 as well as 180 degree. So, this is parallel and this is anti-parallel. Keep this in mind. Okay? Understood? So, such small, small things might cost you some marks. They might not like the complete answer, then they will cut marks for that. Okay, a long wire is carrying some current of 35 amperes. What is the magnitude of the field at a point of 20 centimeters from the wire? Direct formula, my dear warriors. Magnetic field due to a long wire carrying current is mu naught i and there is 2 and pi and r in that. Mu naught is nothing but 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7. 
current is 35 and then you have how much 2 pi over here and what is the distance it's 20 centimeters so you can just put 2 into uh, 10 to the power minus 1 meters 2 2 is a 4 4 pi 4 pi cancels so i am just uh, left with i believe 10 to the power minus 7 into 35 divided by 10 to the power minus 1 so it will be 35 into 10 to the power minus 6 tesla 35 and 10 to the power minus 6 tesla or 3.5 into minus 10 to the power minus 5 tesla one and the same thing got it my dear warriors perfecto 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 yeah roshni check out the sample paper you will get all your answers that's why I always go through the sample papers and pyqs that is always better okay now a lot of students ask sir if i leave the answer like this will the examiner cut mark because in the model paper they might be given this answer how do i know whether I should leave the answer as 35 into 10 to the power minus 6 or should I leave it as 3.5 into 10 to the power minus 6. Ideally, they should not cut marks no matter what because both these things are this. Uh, sorry, this is not 10 to the power minus 6. This is 10 to the power minus 5. Yeah, it should be given same marks. They should not cut marks for this. And if they have cut marks, then you can challenge. You can, you know, ask the examiner later on once you get the marks why have you cut the marks over here right so this uh you don't have to worry should, should i put the decimal after one digit or two digits because you would never know how it has been printed in the model paper sample uh, paper or in the sample solutions which the examiner will get okay yeah right electron is going along the positive x-axis when a uniform magnetic field is there in the positive axis what's the direction of the force acting on it so the force formula the force formula remember is q v cross b velocity is in the i direction magnetic field is in the j direction charge is of an electron many people miss it so the minus sign will be there so my dear warriors i cross j what is i cross j first of all tell me that what is i cross j i cross j is basically k right i cross j is k so force will be in the k hat direction with the negative sign so the force force is along along negative z axis the force is along the negative z axis is that very very clear absolutely very good so if you miss the minus sign you will get zero marks such simple questions will come but silly mistake chances are there because you are in a hurry so be very calm be very patient be very cool okay be steady i'm not saying be slow be steady be be very patient there is a difference between being slow and being patient understand that okay you should have focus you should have focus when you are solving don't think about anything and don't be in a hurry and don't think about multiple things just concentrate carefully read it without any distraction two coaxial coils of radius equal number of turns carry current the same direction separated by distance two are find the magnitude of the direction of the net magnetic field produced at the midpoint of the line joining the centers this question is also very important this can come and many people will not remember the formula two parallel coaxial coils of equal radius and equal number of turns currents in the same direction okay so let me draw coaxial coils why is it becoming square please become a oval yes two axial coils of equal radius and equal number of turns in the same direction and are separated by some distance okay so they are also separated by some distance like this perfecto like this and this is given to be r this is also given to be r and you have to find the magnetic field at the midpoint so this is r and this is r so if the currents are in the same direction then the magnetic field will also be in the same direction over here due to both the coils so the magnetic field will also be in the same direction due to both the coils the magnetic field will be magnetic field due to one plus magnetic field due to 2 but both of them will be equal so it will be 2 into b1 they both are in the same direction of 
same magnitude of the same magnitude so that is why it will be two times of any one coil's magnetic field the formula that you will use is mu naught into current into r square divided by two times r square plus x square raised to three by two that is the formula here you substitute everything first of all that two and two got just cancelled so mu naught into i radius of the coil is r only so r square divided by here you will have r square x what is x x is basically this distance from the point where you are measuring the field to the center of the coil so plus r square whole raised to 3 by 2 solve this you will get the answer in the same form as expected and the same form as expected okay so this will just become mu naught i r square whole thing divided by th uh, 2 r square whole raised to 3 by 2 whole raised to 3 by 2 is that clear yes all right all right if they didn't give internal choice in chemistry then be prepared for the same thing to happen in physics also why should physics be any different okay so expect the same things to happen here you should be prepared for worst of the worst scenarios cool so this was this particular question let's move on let's move on yes we are done with this let's move on to magnetism and matter quickly coming up on your screen if there is a long solenoid and it is wrapped if there is a current there is steel uh, and uh, solid core with permeability of this much the wire of the solenoid one second this is not supposed to be done one second guys yeah yes this one relative permeability of iron is this much the magnetic susceptibility is the magnetic susceptibility is how much come on let's try to do this question there are few things which were deleted from this chapter there are few things which are there in this chapter like you know many things uh like your hysteresis loop and so many other things were deleted earth's magnetism etc were deleted from this chapter so relative permeability of iron is this much what is the magnetic susceptibility remember relative permeability is 1 plus susceptibility so the susceptibility is relative permeability minus 1 so it is 5500 five, zero, zero minus 1 so it is 5499 nine. yes this is the answer 5499 nine. yes very good very simple looking question if you know the formula if you know the theory you can easily do this let's move on to the next one coming up on your screen okay so uh it is this <laughs> yeah let's see yeah a roland ring of some mean radius has some turns of wire wound around a ferromagnetic core of some relative permeability this much what is the magnetic field in the core for a magnetizing current of 1.2 amperes now uh, basically this is like a toroid wire you can think of it like that the radius is given it has this many turns of wire wound on that core for a relative permeability of uh, uh, sorry not toroid just like a coil okay so radius is given your uh, turns are given then your permeability is also given and what else is given your current is also given all you need to do is just use this particular formula mu naught into current into number of turns and then divided by 2r but this time multiplied with relative permeability that's all just multiplied with relate relative uh you know permeability everything is given to you so relative permeability is given your radius is given your turns is given and your current is given solving this you will get the correct answer right so there is nothing great about these kind of questions it's just like you should know relative permeability if it is given you multiply the permeability with that particular number very good let's move on to the next one coming up on your screen according to gauss law for magnetism what is the correct statement well gauss's law of magnetism says that the magnetic field lines are always in closed loops 
they are always in closed loops and because of this what happens is the total flux the total flux is always zero for any closed surface because whatever goes in has to come out so the formula for flux is nothing but magnetic field dot area dot area so the total flux will be the integration of it so that's why b dot ds integration will be zero b dot ds integration that cyclic integration is important many people will think what is the difference between option a and option b remember this is closed surface this is closed surface integral whereas in the option b that symbol is not there that is why it will be incorrect this will be the correct answer okay i hope this is very very clear a uh, magnetic field due to earth is not there so let's uh, skip that part hysteresis is also not there yeah this is there distinguish between diamagnetic and ferromagnetic materials in terms of susceptibility and their behavior in non uniform magnetic field come on put up the answers in the chat box very quickly my dear warriors put up the answers in the chat box very quickly what is the difference in the behavior what is the difference in the behavior for basically your uh, diamagnetic and ferromagnetic materials in terms of susceptibility and non uniform magnetic fields what and all do you remember what and all do you remember come on put it up in the chat box really quick certain points at least if you remember that will be good see if you take about talk about diamagnetic material versus ferromagnetic material susceptibility for diamagnetic material is small negative number is a small negative number for ferromagnetic it is a large positive number yes or no large positive number yes or no how many of you remember this for paramagnetic material it is a small positive number small positive number yes how do they behave in non uniform magnetic fields or basically magnetic fields diamagnetic will repel diamagnetic will basically if you take non uniform magnetic fields they will basically repel paramagnetic basically attracts but it is weak attraction here there is strong attraction in ferromagnetic strong attraction in ferromagnetic yes that's what happens so susceptibility for ferromagnetic is large positive yes diamagnetic is smallly negative in case of non uniform magnetic field they are repelled very weakly whereas ferromagnets are attracted very very strongly that's it that is what is there is that clear my dear warriors is that clear my dear warriors perfect perfect let's let's go on to the next one coming up on your screen now get ready for it yes let's let's go on to the next one yeah is it electromagnetic induction so guys remember those difference tables of all the three materials susceptibility formula uh, uh, susceptibility values uh, your permeability values examples of diamagnetic paramagnetic ferromagnetic materials also you should remember uh, you know their behavior uh, in non uniform magnetic field also whether magnetic field increases or decreases all these basic things if you remember that is good enough emi we have come to emi let's go on to emi we are almost completing part 1 part 2 is actually very small two coils c1 c2 have turns n1 n2 current i1 in coil c1 is changing with time the emf in coil 2 is given by confusing question it's a question on mutual induction faraday's law and lenz's law together okay don't worry even if you are joined in late you concentrate on the current questions whatever chapters you have missed watch the replay of that part obviously don't don't think that oh my god i have missed so much what will i do now all those things theek okay? hai just concentrate on the current part yes okay come on my dear students what do you think answer is option a b c or d yes it is option b proud of all of you pranav very good pratigna yes so question is current is changing in coil 1 what is the emf in coil 2 so it will be mutual induction coefficient and it will be rate of change of current in the first coil that is how it goes mdi1 by dt this is the formula if e1 was asked 
if e1 was asked then it will be minus m d i2 y dt that is how it will be so the question on mutual induction moving on to the next one two coils have mutual inductance of 1.5 henry current in one coil changes from 0 to 20 in 0.5 second the change in the flux with the other coil is how many webers webers is the unit of flux in magnetism not for electricity so mutual induction is given current changes is given and how much time is also given change in flux is asked so we all know flux in any coil is mutual inductance into current in any one coil so the change of the flux in any coil is mutual induction into change of the current in the first or the primary coil mutual inductance is 1.5 change in the current is 20 minus 0 correct so it will be 20 into 1.5 which is 2 into 15 which is basically 30 so that is the change of the flux in the second coil what about this time this is useless information this is useless piece of information so don't worry about it right the answer is just going to be simple 30 webers great if you use lenz's law the polarity of the induced emf is such that it tends to produce a current which aids the change in the magnetic flux that produced it induced emf is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux that produced it so statement based question in mcq which can be asked in your cbsc board exam lenz's law lenz's law is a law which is based on energy based on energy conservation it gives you the direction of the induced current it gives you the direction of induced induced current come on my dear warriors it gives you the direction of the induced current yes answer is c the polarity of the induced emf such that it tends to produce a current which always opposes this word opposes is important the change in the magnetic flux that produced it that produced it it opposes the flux it opposes the flux uh, which produced it so the induced emf direction produces a current which opposes the change in the flux that is the statement of your lens is low based on energy conservation and it gives you the direction okay now next question is on faraday's law i believe there is some magnetic field and it is changing with time you can see it is changing at 0 0.02 teslas per second area of the loop is also given the total current uh, circuit resistance is also given of 5 ohms what is the emf and the current induced very straightforward so faraday's law says that the induced emf magnitude not the direction i'm not worried about the minus sign is d phi by dt what is phi you might ask flux is magnetic field into area and that is derivative with respect to time area is not changing but field is changing so bring that area bring that area outside bring that area outside so it will be a times db by dt now once i get this i can substitute the value what is the area area is 120 centimeter square but converted into meter square what is the area uh, sorry field changing at 0 0.02 db by dt is exactly this this is exactly nothing but db by dt rate of change of magnetic field with respect to time from this what you get is the magnitude of this particular induced emf magnitude of this induced emf so i think it will be 0.24 into 10 to the power minus 3 volts yeah so yes option c is the correct one you can see 0.24 into 10 to the power minus 3 volts once you get this you can find the induced current also it is not that difficult it is nothing but the induced emf divided by the resistance so you have 0.24 millivolt divided by the resistance which is 5 ohms by 5 ohms it will come out to be 0 0.048 milliampere that is the induced current which is there right over here okay clear how to solve these kind of questions where magnetic field is changing take the area outside the derivative 
and then db by dt will be given to you in some way then substituting the value you will get the emf if you divide emf with resistance you get current current is voltage by resistance symbol the coefficient of self inductance mutual questions we solve let's go to self inductance now cos theta is not there because see the questions over here the magnetic field is horizontal and the coil is also you know like perpendicular the area of the coil is uh, like this this is the coil and the magnetic field is over here magnetic field is here if it is not given assume that theta is zero assume that theta is zero so assume that theta is zero over here okay cool Great. awesome great when a current changes from 2 amperes to minus 2 amperes in this much second emf is induced what is the coefficient of self inductance is there a formula that i know for self inductance yes it is nothing but uh, minus l di by dt so instead of di i can also put delta so delta i by delta t so the magnitude of that emf is given to me so it is nothing but 8 volts l value i don't know delta i is 2 minus minus 2 in how much time it is basically 0 0.05 so therefore therefore l will be equal to 8 multiplied by 0 0.05 divided by 2 minus minus 2 will become 2 plus 2 which is basically 4 how much will it come out to be yes 0 0.1 henry very good very good very good very nice point one and re awesomeness yeah great let's go a train is going with uniform velocity from north to south will any induced emf appear on the ends of the axle the answer is let's see if the train is going with uniform velocity from this is north this is south this is east this is west so if the train is going from north to south this is how the velocity will be this is how the velocity will be the axle the axle of the train will be like this the axle of the train will be like this this is the length of that axle this is that axle the magnetic field the magnetic field due to the earth you know due to the earth will be from north to south south to north in that direction the magnetic field will be in this particular direction right so because velocity is now parallel to the magnetic field the induced emf will be zero it's only possible when it is perpendicular or at some angle because it is parallel or anti parallel then it is going to be zero so i think over here they have mentioned yes this is not correct guys this is wrong ignore this so across the ends of the axle there will be no magnetic field uh, sorry induced emf which will be created because v and b they are both you know uh what do you say uh, uh, they are basically parallel to each other all right so there will be no emf which is going to be created is that okay shall we go ahead to the next one coming up on your screen ready for it ready for it ready for it okay uh be careful be careful uh sanvi uh v and b are anti-parallel or parallel so there will be no forces yeah so i am also a little doubtful whether this kind of question can come because earth's magnetism is deleted so i'm not really sure if this question should come in the examination but if it comes you know be ready to solve it they might say earth's magnetism is deleted but it is a general knowledge thing that earth's magnetic field lines go from south to north or north to south okay we are going to have a break after this particular uh, chapter a metallic piece gets hot when surrounded by a coil carrying high frequency alternating current why heating of conductors when magnetic field is going to be passed through it is a direct effect or consequence of eddy currents so changing magnetic fields produce induced current loops in the conductor which are called as eddy currents these eddy currents are random and they follow a path of least resistance 
and they produce heat by I squared R joules heating and that heat is completely lost. So that is why uh, a metallic piece gets hot when you have varying magnetic fields due to varying uh, currents and all of that. Is that okay? Great. Predict the direction of induced current in the metal rings 1 and 2 when current I in the wire is steadily decreasing. This is a question based on this is a question based on your lenses law. So you can see that there is current I over here and this current is decreasing, decreasing. This current is basically given to be decreasing. Use your right hand thumb rule. Hold the thumb in the direction of the current. See how the magnetic field lines are going to come. I think it is going to come from the top. So that means over here, the magnetic field is going to be towards you. And here, the magnetic field is going to be away from you. The magnetic field is going to be away from you. So because the current is decreasing, even the magnetic field will also reduce. So because it is reducing, the induced field will try to support it. It will try to strengthen it. Induced field will strengthen it. Induced will strengthen it. So that is why the induced field will be exactly in the same direction. Exactly in the same direction. Understood my dear warriors? Great. Now if you look at the upper coil, if you hold your thumb in the direction towards you, basically in your mouth, in your mouth, because the magnetic field induced is towards you, you will see that your fingers will curl in the anti-clockwise direction. Your fingers will curl in the anti-clockwise direction. That is the direction of induced current here. Whereas for the bottom one, the magnetic field is away from you. Hold the thumb. The fingers will curl in the clockwise direction. In the clockwise direction. That is the induced field in the below coil. So anti-clockwise and clockwise. Anti-clockwise and clockwise. I don't know which is one or two. Yeah. So anti-clockwise and clockwise. Uh, it is decreasing, guys. Be careful. The current is decreasing. So be very careful. The current is decreasing. So the induced field, yeah. Induced field should strengthen it. And I have assumed the direction of the current this way. If the direction of the current was this way, then the answer will be exactly opposite. So I think here in the diagram, that is also not very clear as to where the current was. Because if you see, if you see this current, it's looking like a dot. I am also not sure which direction is the current's arrow mark part, uh, pointing. If it was this way, then this is the answer. But for the same question, but for the same question, my dear students, if the current was this particular way, if the current was this particular way, then, then in those loops, exactly opposite currents will come up. Exactly opposite currents will come up. So here, the current will be clockwise and here the current will be anticlockwise. Okay. So I have given you both the solutions. I have given you both the solutions because it is not very clear as to what exactly is the direction of the current right over here. I am not able to see it properly. So that's the reason why I have given both the solutions. Is that clear? Everybody with me understood or clear? -o? Shall we go ahead? Light up the chat box quickly. Light up the chat box really quick, really quick. Okay. Great, great, great. Cool. So let's move on to the next one coming up on your screen. And here it is. What does this say? A conducting YouTube can slide another YouTube maintaining electrical contact. The magnetic field is perpendicular and is directed inwards. Each tube moves towards the other with constant speed v. Find the magnitude of the induced EMF across the ends of the tube in terms of the magnetic field, velocity and the width of the tube. Very good. So in that case, magnetic flux increases. So it is opposite. No, it's not because the magnetic flux is increasing Ram. It's because the field only changed the direction. So the direction of the induced field will also change. It will still try to strengthen it in that case, but dot will become cross, cross will become dot. That's the reason why the directions were opposite. All right. 
So in this question, you have to use motional EMF concept and you will get the answer as BL into 2V. Relative velocity of the tube is given. So the conducting tube can slide into the another tube maintaining electrical contact. The magnetic field is perpendicular. Each tube is moving towards the other with a speed of V. If you find the relative speed, it will be 2V. It will be 2V and that is why you will just put 2V over there and you will get the answer as 2VLV. Okay, perfect. As simple as that. I think it's time for a small break now. It's time for a small break. We'll return in 10 minutes. We'll return in 10 minutes. Okay, it's time for a small break. We'll come back in 10 minutes. So just mention over here.
Hello, Mario Warriors. Welcome back. Welcome back. I hope I'm audible, visible to all of you. Ready, 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 ready for the last part. We'll do this little bit more quickly. Yes, we are going to be little bit quick in this because I know you also need to self-study after this. So we have to solve as many questions as possible. We have done almost 40-50% of the questions now. Now we are going to go towards the remaining part. But this is going to be a little bit more of a rapid fire. Welcome back. Hello, 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 Krishna, Ram, Pradigna, Ramana, Malika. Hi, hi, Vishali, Rahul. I hope you guys are all benefiting from the session a lot because uh, it's a lot of work to collect these questions. Trust me, it's not very easy. And uh, conducting this class also takes a lot of energy. Lot of effort, lot of lot of money, lot of things which are involved. So many people are involved in making all these sessions. So make sure you are showering your love by you know liking it at least. At least express your gratitude, express your support to the channel by talking about the channel to your friends and getting your friends to this channel. Okay, especially who are preparing for board examinations. So time for the next part. Yes, good evening, good evening, uh, or rather good afternoon as of now. I know you guys must be hungry. Some of you grabbed your lunch quickly. But let me tell you, we'll try to cover this now, the remaining part in one hour. Okay, we'll try to do as much as possible in one hour. And the remaining questions, I'll try to give it to you as uh, basically PDF as homework. Okay, so get ready, guys. Here is the next question set coming up on your screen from alternating current. There is a 200 ohm resistor which is connected in series with some capacitor voltage across it is as shown as written down. What is the capacitive reactance? Capacitive reactance is 1 by omega C and omega value is already given right over here. This, this thing over here is just omega and capacitance is also given right over here. So just have to substitute those values. So 2500 into 5 into 10 to the power minus 6. Shall we go ahead? Understood how to solve this question? Uh, Harshad, I didn't share the PDF for the previous class. Which one? Derivations, I'm not going to share the PDF. I told you before. Uh, but if you're talking about the previous class before that graphs, I will just check with the team as soon as the session is over and I'll make sure that the PDFs are shared. In fact, let me message them right now as I'm talking. Okay, okay. Great. I have just messaged the team as well regarding this one. Okay, cool. Yes, the graph session notes I have asked the team to integrate it. Yes, don't worry. Next one. Oh, by the way, let me also tell you that in case you are unaware of uh, this particular uh, fact uh, there is a revision also happening at our centers right now uh, wherever you are in the uh, in different parts of the country if you want to get the revision in an offline way in a personal way make sure that you are attending as many sessions as possible in your nearest center be it tamil nadu karnataka maharashtra telangana andhra pradesh rajasthan punjab delhi bihar so many Vedantu learning centers and also there are crash courses available for all of you in these offline centers for J meet both and uh, you know there will be courses which might be starting or which might have started depending on your uh, center over there and if you have somebody who is really uh, interested for a long term batch yes there are foundation courses neat courses je courses everything right now which is available for all of you and our classrooms are not very big for a reason because i want personal attention i want every student to get personal attention so you will see the classrooms if you visit the center you will get to know they are small so that you know 
every student gets that personal attention not not many students uh, will be able to sit in that classroom for a very very peculiar reason for getting personal attention and getting those doubts being solved so make sure you are visiting the near center as soon as possible and register for the best course which is suited for you or get your younger ones enrolled in these batches okay so let's move on to the next question guys coming up on your screen the current in the lcr series circuit will be maximum when omega is what when omega is basically resonance occurs and or resonance occurs when it equals to the natural frequency in fact the value of that particular omega is 1 by root lc don't get confused and mark option b that is wrong it is 1 over root lc should be the frequency of that ac circuit then resonance occurs then resonance will up that is the question okay then a series circuit consists of a source of some frequency some resistance some capacitance and some inductance the impedance of the circuit when the frequency is adjusted to twice the resonant angular frequency okay so omega is not directly given omega is not directly given how to do this yes j advance is also there in some centers so it depends on the strength of the students and you know uh, the condition of the center everything so many things are there how many batches are being formed so if you are looking for j advance also yes definitely yeah krishna i'll be sending you the gravitational pdf uh, after i come back to bangalore I, I, there is one uh, disaster which happened i will i don't know i'll tell you later on but only when i go to bangalore i'll be able to send the pdf it is in a, another system now so i have to go back to my home to send you the pdf <laughs> okay it's a big trouble so don't worry i'm going to bangalore very soon right so first of all find the natural frequency over here using this formula root over lc one upon so inductance you know it is 4.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 uh, and uh, capacitance you know 1.25 into 10 to the power minus 6 from this you will get omega n but the actual frequency is two times of omega n so that means it will be two times of this whole thing whatever these numbers are 4.5 into 1.25 into 1.25 into 10 to the power minus 9 then once you get this omega what you do is find xl which is omega l then find xc which is 1 by omega c then find z by using this particular formula which is nothing but r square plus xl minus xc whole square solve this and you'll get the answer you have to find each of these values substitute them and then you will get the final answer to be basically around 146 ohms around 146 ohms so it's a lengthy problem a lengthy problem but you know it will uh, give you the answer so uh sweetie i don't know exactly how many centers in hyderabad just uh use that contact details or the uh link which is there in the description box the team will get back to you with the nearest center in hyderabad but i know that there is more than one center in uh, chennai more than one center in hyderabad so uh, in fact in pune also there are two centers so i'm pretty sure there are multiple centers in most of the cities for high frequency capacitor will offer less resistance or more resistance or none of these or zero resistance so for this use the formula xc is 1 by omega c if omega increases xc reduces so for high frequency resistance will reduce so hence the answer is less resistance is it not xc minus xl well it doesn't matter think about it because you are squaring it because you are squaring it so whether you do xl minus xc or xc minus xl you will get the same answer so don't worry about whether it was c minus l or l minus c got it next one effectively vrms is related to the maximum voltage by what particular constant what is the relationship we all know vrms is nothing but v maximum by root 2 1 by root 2 is basically 0 0.707 so that is why you get the answer so 1 by root 2 is approximately 0 0.707 you should know the standard value so hence option a will be the correct answer yeah got it so yeah moving on to the next one in ac current current is i naught sin omega t 
and certain heat is produced over a time write the value of the dc current that will produce the same heat in the same resistor in the same time so that value of dc current that produces the same heat in the same time for the same resistor is basically called by definition the rms current is by definition called rms current and rms current is always the peak value divided by root 2 so it will be nothing but i naught divided by root 2 it is nothing but i naught divided by root 2 so that is purely by definition you can just write it over there got it so that is the definition of rms as well define rms value of current how is it related to peak value we just did it it's the same question repeated in different ways so these are all standard important questions moving on to the next one define the term wattless current what is the meaning of the term wattless current that means energy is not going to be used wattless what is energy power is being used up wattless means no energy is being used up resistor consumes energy capacitor and inductor does not use up energy it stores and gives it back so that is the wattless current and basically uh, you will see that it comes from this particular triangle you can show vi vi cos phi and then vi sin phi this is the actual this is wattless this is wattless and this is the apparent so that is the formula for wattless current vi sin phi and it is the uh, current which uh, does not cause any kind of energy loss yeah so i sin phi this i sin phi will become the wattless current wattless current because vi sin phi becomes the wattless power this becomes the wattless power this is the actual power vi was the apparent power this is also called as the power triangle. We just did it in the graphs session. In the following circuit, in the following circuit, capacitance uh, of the capacitor, if the power factor is unity, and also calculate the Q factor, guys, standard formula based questions. So, how do you do this? If inductors, inductance is given, resistance is given, capacitance is not given. For, uh, you have to find the capacitance if the power factor is already given to be unity what does this mean that means phi is zero because cos zero is one cos zero is one this can only happen at resonance this can only happen at resonance the frequency is also given so therefore omega will be one over root of lc so omega is nothing but two pi f frequency is 50 hertz and 1 by root of l l is given yes 200 milli henry so 200 into 10 to the power minus 3 and into capacitance solving this you will get the value of the capacitance which comes out as 50 which com comes out as 50 micro farad okay understood guys how to solve this omega is 1 by root we'll see frequency was 50 hertz given inductance is given capacitance is not given how to find the q factor of the circuit there is a direct formula for the q factor right over here yes q factor it is 1 by r 1 by r root of l by c all the values are given to you you know the value of resistance it is 10 you know the value of inductance it is 200 milli so 200 into 10 to the power minus 3 you also know the capacitance it is 50 into 10 to the power minus 6 so solving this you are going to get the q factor which is around 6.32 6.32 cool okay so just remember this formulas q factor don't think sir sharpness is deleted or not q factor is deleted or not what if you know they give a question on this to be on the safer side just do this to be on the safer side just complete this okay great great moving on a source of voltage is connected to a series combination of resistor and a capacitor draw the phasor diagram and obtain the expression for impedance of the circuit and phase angle ac source of voltage is connected to a series combination draw the phasor diagram so if it is connected to a resistor then the voltage across the resistor as well as 
the current passing through the resistor are going to be in the same phase. So the phase angle or the phase difference between voltage and current is just going to be zero. Yes. But if there is a capacitor also, if there is a capacitor also, then the voltage across the capacitor will be behind the behind the current by 90 degree behind the current by 90 degree and then there will be a resultant voltage something like this this will be the resultant voltage and that's when you get the phase difference between the voltage and the current so this is how you draw the diagram exactly perfect yep and then you can see that uh, what else you need? V naught is given. A resistor R is given. Draw the phasor diagram and obtain the expression. Okay. So, yeah. Over here, I can also write. I can also write. You know, uh, this particular V. If it is V naught sine omega t. If it is V naught sine omega t. Right. This omega will help me. This omega will help me calculate Xc, which is 1 by omega c, which is 1 by omega c. And from that, from that, I can find the value of phi. How, you might ask? Because the resistance of the circuit will be horizontal. The capacitive reactance will be downwards like this. So the total impedance of the circuit will be in the direction of the voltage in this particular manner and the current is in this particular direction as it is. So, I can just write, what is it? Tan of phi, tan of phi is opposite side, which means it is Xc divided by resistance. Xc divided by resistance and Xc is 1 by omega c. So, 1 by omega c into R will be tan of phi, will be tan. So, that's how you can write it down. Okay. Omega C R exactly what we have got exactly what we have got right so these are some standard things which you should should know phasor diagram how who is behind ahead of which particular quantity by how much current voltage everything I have given this in the waves uh, uh, part I have given this in the uh, sorry not waves graphs part of the session. Let's go to electromagnetic waves now. Everybody ready for this? Yes, you'll be getting the PDF for this session. Definitely, you'll be getting the PDF for this session. Don't worry. All righty. Let's move on to the next, which is electromagnetic waves. The radio station in Minneapolis broadcasts some frequency, the wavelength and the angular wave number R. So, EM waves, guys, frequency is given. Wavelength and angular wave number are asked. What you do is use the formula C is F lambda. So lambda will be speed of light by frequency. Speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8. Frequency is 830 into 10 to the power 3. From this, you will get the value of lambda. Once you get the value of lambda, this part is done. Wavelength is done. You will get this as probably 361 meters. Next question is angular wave number. Angular wave number is nothing but 2 pi divided by lambda. So divide to 2 pi with 361. You must approximately get this as 0 0.0174 meters. So that is how you solve this problem. You should know C is F lambda standard formula. Angular wave number is 2 pi divided by lambda. Okay. With this wattless current is basically the current component which is involved in capacitors and inductors because an inductor and a capacitor never causes heat loss it's only the resistor which causes the heat loss so i cos phi component causes heat loss i sin phi component does not cause any heat loss which is involved in capacitors and inductors where the energy gets stored or juggled between magnetic and electrostatics and this magnetic and electrostatic energy is conservative form of energy so it will not cause any loss okay Gopala Krishnan, I'm very good. Thank you so much. Right. The direction of propagation of EM waves is parallel to both electric field and magnetic field vector, only perpendicular to electric field vector. This is standard. Whenever you talk about electromagnetic wave, the speed of light, electric field and magnetic field, all of them are mutually perpendicular to each other. In fact, if you know that the electric field is like this, and let's say 
the magnetic field is in this direction. You do E cross B. You do E cross B. And whatever direction you get from the right hand rule will be the direction of the velocity of light. And all of them are mutually perpendicular to each other. Keep this in mind. All of them are mutually perpendicular to each other. Is that right? So keep these things in mind. Electric field cross magnetic field is always going to be parallel to the speed of light. Moving on. If there is an electromagnetic wave which goes with certain speed in a piece of glass, find the wavelength of the wave in the glass, the wavelength of the wave of same frequency in air. Okay. So how do you do this question? Electromagnetic waves frequency is given, speed is also given. In a certain piece of glass, the wavelength can be obtained by wavelength is nothing but speed of light in the glass divided by the frequency. Speed of light in the glass is 2.17. It's slightly less because glass has some refractive index. The whole thing divided by frequency, which is 5.7 into 10 to the power 14. From this, you will get the wavelength. The wavelength maybe comes out as 0.381 micrometer. I'm just writing it down from here. So 0.381. Okay. Once you get the wavelength of the light in glass, the next part, the next part is the wavelength of the same wave propagating in air. Now, remember one thing. When medium changes, frequency remains same, wavelength changes. So speed of light in air upon speed of light in glass is wavelength of light in air upon wavelength of light in glass. Frequency remains the same. So the wavelength of light in air will be speed of light in air upon speed of light in glass into wavelength of light in glass. Speed of light in air is 3 into 10 to the power 8. Wavelength of light in glass is 0 0.381. We just got it right over here. And speed of light in glass, that was I think given 2.17 into 10 to the power 8. 10 to the power 8. So from this, you will get the answer as 0 0.526 micrometer. 0 0.526 micrometer. Got it? Yes, Kavyashri, there is a crash course for the April attempt in Vedantu. In fact, uh, if you watch my older video, the same, just search for crash course Shreya sir, the, or you can just go through the previous sessions. Uh, it's there in the home page itself maybe. Use the same link, join the same crash course and make your own plan for the, uh, you know, missed classes. The recordings are going to be available. So it's not right to start another crash course for just 10 days or 15 days unless it is just a purely revision based crash course because you can't complete everything right from the scratch with so many lectures back to back. So I would suggest to attend the live classes and whatever lectures you have missed in that, whichever you don't know, watch that. Otherwise, no need to watch that also. If you think that you know everything from before, fine, go ahead. Okay, because now 11th standard syllabus is going to start in the crash course in these next few days. Okay, comparing X-rays and gamma rays, who has more energy, who has more speed, who has less penetrating power? Come on, my dear warriors. Come on, come on, come on, come on. What do you think is the correct answer for this? Yes, gamma rays have more energy than X-rays. Gamma rays have more energy than X-rays. Correct. Very good. Gamma rays have high frequency, small wavelength. So, they are released from nuclear reactions. The speed of electromagnetic wave is maximum in any electromagnetic wave moves the fastest in vacuum. Any other medium, be it glass, water, liquid, solid, etc., it will always be slower. Hence, the answer for that is vacuum. Okay, vacuum's refractive index is one, so it is the fastest over there. Yeah. If the earth, by the way, for NEET students, remember there is a NEET crash course already running which was just started last, I mean, this week itself on 26th. So if you have not yet enrolled in the NEET crash course, please join it. The first few sessions are by the NEET English team only. So you can see the plan, everything properly executed with test series, with assignments and the study material. 
So be a part of the NEET crash course, which is a 60 day plan, 60, 65 days plan crash course with a revision PYQ series as well as mock test. Everything you don't have to join any course, you don't have to refer any other book apart from the ones which we are going to give you. So just check that out. Yes, derivations are important. If Earth did not have atmosphere, would its average surface temperature be higher or lower than what it is now? If it did not have atmosphere, then what happens? There will be no ozone layer, there is no atmosphere. So the heat which is there won't be trapped anymore. So it will be much lower. So what happens? The energy from the sun. It gets reflected from the earth's surface and it gets trapped in the atmospheric gases due to the greenhouse effect. And that's why the earth's temperature is hot. So more greenhouse effect happens, the temperature of the earth increases. If there was no atmosphere, no greenhouse effect, all the heat will be reflected as much as possible. And then you will see the temperature of the earth will be much, much lesser. Is that okay, my dear warriors? Yep, very good. Let's move on. To the next one, which of the following has the shortest wavelength? Microwave, ultraviolet, X rays. These are standard questions. Come on, my dear warriors. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Micro waves, ultraviolet rays, and X rays. Shortest wavelength. Who is the most energetic? That will be having the shortest wavelength. X rays has the most energy, so that's why X ray has the shortest wavelength. Microwave has the least energy. So that way, that's why, in fact, long wavelengths will be there for microwaves. Correct. Amazing. 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 Name the EM wave used for studying crystal structure in solids. What is the frequency range? Again, application of EM waves. So remember, to study the crystal structure, you use the diffraction, diffraction between the crystals. You use Bragg's law and all of that. And that is basically yeah, X-rays. X-rays are extremely short wavelength, typically in few Armstrongs. So the frequency comes between 10 to the power 16 to 10 to the power 21. Should you remember this? I think it is better to remember it or else if you know the wavelength, you can calculate the frequency. Either remember wavelength or remember frequency because C is F lambda. Accordingly, you can get the other thing. Is that clear? J correct. Please concentrate where I am. Don't worry where I was, where I am going to be. <laughs> what matters is I'm teaching you right now. So concentrate. Just few days are there and you guys are worried about why I was there, why I was here. Just concentrate. Warriors. Okay. Cool. Welders. Welders wear goggles, face masks with glass windows to protect their eyes from EM waves. What radiations are them? Uh, and what is the range of the frequency? What is the range of their frequency? Come on, my dear students. Yes, the goggles and the mask which they wear is to protect them from those harmful radiation which comes, which might damage their eyes permanently. And they are nothing but ultraviolet rays. Exactly. And the frequency of ultraviolet rays is from, uh, basically it is shorter wavelength than violet. So it's smaller than 400 nanometers wavelength wise, but frequency wise, it is of the order of 10 to the power 14 to 10 to the power 16. So if you know these things, imagine immediately you'll get one mark to two marks, one mark to two marks. Correct. Next, what is the electromagnetic wave, which is used for, you know, uh, treatment of cancer? Uh, sorry. No, no. Uh, what is this? Electromagnetic wave, which is used for the following and arrange them in increasing order of their penetrating power. So for water purification, you might have heard of advertisements, water purification, what they use. Come on. Treatment of cancer, what they use. Remote sensing. It is not re right sensing, re uh, remote sensing. Remote sensing, you use microwaves. Yes. It's not rewrite sensing. So microwaves, ultraviolet, UV purification, ultraviolet, ultraviolet can damage tissues, including biological organisms. That's why it is used for water purification. Microwaves is used for remote sensing, for sensing different remote objects. For cancer treatment, you use extremely energetic rays, which can remove the tumors in the human body. So energy wise, gamma is highest, least is micro in middle you have ultraviolet. Correct. Exactly. No, and infrared is not there anymore. Infrared is not there anymore. 
ready for ray optics ready for ray optics i think we have very little time now let's continue i had told you that we'll be taking the class till around two o'clock i'll be extending it for more half an hour okay after this whatever is remaining i'll be giving you the pdf of this let's go okay according to the sign convention the height measured left with respect to x-axis normal to the principal axis is positive downwards upwards rightward check this out cartesian sign convention what do you think so how are em waves of different frequencies produced each has their own method it's not like one single method is there uh, everything has a different method like for x-rays there is a thing called as coolidge tube uh, by heating you might get ultraviolet infrared and visible spectrum by nuclear reactions etc you might get gamma rays using an electrical antenna dipole type you can get microwaves and long radio waves so every range of the spectrum has different methods of producing it okay so that's the answer for it okay penetrating power yes it increases with the energy and also depends on the size of the particles so if you talk about electromagnetic waves the penetrating power is just dependent on the energy but if you compare em waves with let's say alpha rays alpha rays are particle rays they are those are particles so they are heavy they are slow so penetrating power will be very less yes the correct answer for this is d upwards is positive normal to the principal positive x axis is taken positive yes perfect a lens of power 2d is placed in contact with another lens of power minus 1d the combination will behave like a lens of what focal length whenever you have combination of lenses uh, then remember the powers get added so p1 plus p2 will be the total power p1 is 2 p2 is minus 1 is the net power the net power is 1 by f so it will be just 1 by f over here so f will be 1 meter which is 100 centimeter which is basically 100 centimeter yes it is plus 100 centimeter that is the reason why it is converging it is converging positive means yeah it is converging very good dispersion is uh, deleted i believe but still i'll just do it in case they ask dispersion is what exactly dispersion is basically the not the scattering of light because light has different refractive index for different colors that's why the light will split into component colors that is called as dispersion that is called as dispersion very good moving on if you use a converging lens to form an image on the screen when the upper half of the lens is covered by some screen what will happen even if there is a lens like this and there was an object there will be many rays which will be coming from the object many rays which will be coming from the object like this and they will be forming the image somewhere they will be forming the image somewhere like this yeah this is the image this is the object so if you cover the upper half with some screen fewer rays will reach so what will happen the intensity of the image will go down that's all other than that image is still going to be formed because you just need two rays to form the image hence the complete image will still be formed but the image will not disappear or intensity won't increase intensity will decrease so hence option b is the most appropriate option total internal reflection occurs when what what think about it refractive index of medium 2 with respect to 1 denser with respect to rarer guys sign of that critical angle is basically 1 by refractive index of the dense medium with respect to the rare medium that is what the formula is so ic will be sine inverse of 1 by mu so if the angle of incidence is more than is more than basically your critical angle then your total internal reflection will up so that's it that's the answer so sign of the angle of incidence will be more than this one by refractive index then you will see total internal reflection will occur yes yes no cos no tan yeah sign of that sign of that because you can see right from here i is more than ic ic means it is sine inverse of one by mu 
take sine on the other side. So sine of i will be more than 1 by mu. So this is the condition for your total internal reflection. What is the number of images of an object which is formed between two plane parallel mirrors? This is very, very simple. If you place any object, the number of images that are formed are on both the sides and infinite number of images are formed on either side. That's it, as simple as that. But if the mirrors are not parallel, if the mirrors are not parallel, then the number of images formed are 360 by theta, 360 by theta. If it is odd, if it is odd and if it is even, then it is 360 by theta minus 1. If it is even, if it is even. So this is the formula for it. If the mirrors are basically inclined at an angle because the images are formed in a beautiful circle, something like this. So the number of images are finite in that case, but for parallel mirrors, infinite images are formed. Keep this in mind. What is the expression for uh, its magnifying power? I think uh, it was a lens over here, F0 by Fe. I think what is the meaning of its? Its is compound microscope. Compound microscope. This is standard formula. I have done the formula also in the derivations class. If you have not yet watched it, please watch it right now. Please watch it right now so that you do not face any difficulty in the actual exam. Don't lose marks just because of derivations. Derivations will come. Remember it. Every time it comes, don't think there will be an exception this time. How does the power of a convex lens vary if the incident red light is replaced by violet light? Well, what happens basically is that the refractive index, the refractive index of violet light is lesser than the refractive index of the red light. Okay, refractive index of violet is less than the refractive index of red light. So basically, uh, if you talk about a convex lens, violet light will make it less converging, whereas red light will make it more converging. Converging wise, converging wise, it will be less converging. This will be more converging. That means focal length will be more. Focal length will be more for violet and for red, it will be less. That's all. Yes, that's all. So violet uh, uh, will have uh, more focal length red will have less focal length. So power is asked. So power is 1 by f. So power is 1 by f. So for violet, power will be less and uh, for red, power will be more. As simple as that. So very straightforward. Okay. You should know this formula. 1 by f is mu minus 1. 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. Lens maker formula. Great. A ray of light is incident at some angle on a prism. Symmetrically calculate the refractive index of the material of the prism. So if you talk about the prism, something like this. This is the angle of the prism. The ray of light enters symmetrically. That is given. That means minimum deviation is occurring. That means minimum deviation is occurring. Something like this. Okay. So this is basically R1 and over here also you will get R2 because it is symmetrical. That means R1 is equal to R2 is equal to A by 2 that is standard. So R1 and R2 both will be equal to angle of the prism is how much equilateral. So equilateral prism means angle of the prism is 60 degree. So 60 degree by 2 which will make it 30 degree. The ray of light was incident at 49 degree. That means you can find the refractive index using Snell's law, which is sine of i by sine of r. So sine of basically 49 upon sine of r, r is basically 30. So sine 30 is basically half. If you're wondering, sir, what to do for 49? Think of 49 very close to 45. 45 is uh, sine is 1 by root 2 approximately. So this will be approximately 1 by root 2. So it will make it 2 by root 2, which will make it root 2, which will make it 1.4. This is approximate, but the actual value will be slightly more than 1.4. I think it will come close to 1.5. It will approximately come close to 1.5 because I took the sine of 45 degree and it is 1.4. So I think it will come very close to 1.5. You can check it out. Yes, it is 1.5. 
definitely got it my dear students yes just do the important topics bs fashion if you have not done the entire chapter just make sure that you are doing only the important parts of those chapters uh, there is very little time just do that uh, don't sit and do the derivations if they are difficult if derivations are easy then do it else skip it number 2 uh, do the ncrt exercise completely with the index questions and just do the basic pyqs that's all you do and yeah let's go to wave optics this is the last chapter we'll do because after this i think modern physics is mainly theoretical so i will leave that to you as homework okay so come on let's do this referring to ydse uh, experiment if d is the distance between two slit planes to the screen and d is the distance between two coherent sources then the fringe width is given by distance between the slits and the screen is given distance between the sources is given the fringe width is given by what fringe width is lambda d by d that's it that's the formula for beta as simple as that okay great moving on for a YDSC experiment, phase difference corresponding to a path difference of lambda by 3 is how much? There is a direct formula. Phase difference is 2 pi by lambda into delta x path difference. So 2 pi by lambda into lambda by 3. Lambda lambda cancels. It will be 2 pi by 3. This will be radian which is 120 degrees. So I think it should be option D. Yes, it is option D. Got it, my dear warriors? Perfecto. Perfect. Moving on to the next one, coming up on your screen right now. Here it is. Yes. Light of wavelength falls on a reflecting surface. What are the wavelengths and the frequencies of the reflected light? For what angle of incidence is the reflected ray normal to the incident uh, ray? Okay. Uh, if the light of wavelength this much falls on a plane reef, uh, reflecting surface, the wavelength, why should it even change? So it will just be the same. So you can see the answer will be still the same. It will not be different. It sh there is only one such answer like that. You don't even have to think again. You will just mark option B because every other option has a different value of the wavelength. Every other option has a different value of the wavelength. As simple as that. Number two, when is the ray going to be normal to the incident ray? So if this is the reflecting surface, if this is the reflecting surface, just imagine the incident ray to fall like this. This is the reflected ray and both of them are themselves perpendicular. This can only happen in one particular situation when this is 45 degree and this is also 45 degree. Angle of incidence should be 45 degree. So that is there only in this option. Again, other options anyways get eliminated. So naturally using C is equal to F lambda. You can find the frequency which is c by lambda okay speed of light you know lambda you know you can get the frequency also got it very good the graph pdf i have asked the team at the back end just some time back to send it i i was under the impression it was already shared so if it is not shared yes So I ask the team to put it in the description box of that YouTube video. Okay. I have asked the team to put it in the description box of that particular video. Don't worry. Don't worry. It will be there. After some time you check it out. It will come up. Okay. In the YDSC experiment, angular width of the fringe is found out to be 0.2 degrees on a screen, which is one meter away. Wavelength is used is 600. What will be the width if the Entire apparatus is immersed in water. Take the refractive index to be 4 by 3. What happens is the angular width is directly proportional to the is directly proportional to the wavelength, but the wavelength uh, right will be inversely proportional to the refractive index. More the refractive index, lesser the wavelength. As simple as that. Because speed of light will reduce reducing the wavelength itself. 
So uh, what will happen is uh, earlier it was 0 0.2 degree. Later on, I don't know how much it is. Earlier, the refractive index was 1. Now the refractive index is 4 by 3 because theta, the angular width is inversely proportional to mu as simple as that. So delta theta will be nothing but 0 0.2 multiplied by 3 divided by 4. So that will be nothing but 6 by 0.6 by 4. So you can write it as 0 0.3 by 2 which is nothing but 0 0.15 degree. So 0 0.15 degree is the answer for this particular question. Okay, remember this. So what happens is whenever you immerse anything inside any liquid, the speed reduces. Speed reduces means frequency won't change, wavelength will reduce. And speed is going to be directly affected by refractive index inversely. More the refractive index, lesser is the speed in that medium. Remember that. Cool. When light travels from rare to denser medium, speed decreases. Does this decrease in speed simply, uh, sorry, imply a decrease in the energy carried by the light wave or not? What do you think? The speed of the light reduces. What do you think? Does that also mean that the light's energy also reduces and justify your answer? The answer for this, remember that the frequency of the light never changes. Frequency of the light never changes. So, energy of a photon will also not change because energy of a photon is HF. Energy of a photon is HF. So, each photon still has the same energy just that it is traveling slowly. So, the energy is flowing but at a slower rate but it is the same energy which is coming in and which is going out. Understand that. So, the energy of the wave does not reduce just that it is now moving at a slow rate. It's like the traffic is being created earlier. The cars were going on an expressway. Suddenly, you know, uh, the traffic increased, uh, the roads became smaller and that's why the same cars have to go now on a smaller road at a lesser speed. If two waves are given, the displacements are given by a cos omega t, a cos omega t plus phi and prove this particular relationship using superposition. This is done in the derivations class. Please do the derivations. Please do the derivations. Please check out my derivations video. Check out my derivations video. I have done this in a beautiful way. Please check that out. Okay. I am leaving that up to you. Why do you need coherent sources to create interference? For refracted ray, wavelength will change. Yes. For reflected ray, wavelength will not change. Yes, that was the idea in one of the previous questions. So, many people think in reflection, wavelength changes. No, in refraction, wavelength will change. Okay, why do you need coherent sources? Because of predictability. You need to know what is going to come when. Because if the sources are coherent, I know, okay, crest is coming with crest, trough is coming with trough. So, if it is constructive, it will always remain constructive. So, this is coherent. This is coherent. But if it is incoherent, then what will happen? Once it is like this, then after some time, you know, it is like this. Then after some time, nothing is coming from here. After some time, only thing is coming from here. So, sometimes it is destructive, sometimes it is constructive, then there is no interference here, then there is no interference here. But in co coherent sources, it is always predictable. It is always predictable. So, this one is incoherent. You cannot predict anything. So, that is the problem. They need to have coherent sources so that there is a constant situation of phase difference or basically you should maintain the phase. So, in coherent, I can just say the phase is maintained. Maintain the phase. When you maintain the phase, then you can predict what is going to happen. That is the reason why the sources should be coherent. Moving on to the next one. Yeah. When you take one of the slits in YDAC and you cover it with a small thickness of translucent material, the fringe pattern shifts by some amount and the shift here is given by 30 fringes. Find the refractive index of it. Okay. I hope this is clear. No, no. Incoherent sources do not produce diffraction. That is not right. 
हरिहतन इन कॉरेंट सोर्सेस प्रोड्यूस वेरिंग इंटरफेरेंस समटाइम्स कंस्ट्रक्टिव समटाइम्स डिस्ट्रक्टिव देर इज नो कंसिस्टेंसी सो इन कोहरेंट सोर्सेस देर इज कंसिस्टेंट फेस डिफरेंस कॉन्स्टेंट फेस डिफरेंस दट्स वाई यू कैन प्रेडिक्ट द आउटकम इट इज नॉट रैंड एक्सैक्टली वॉट इट ओके नाउ इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर क्वेश्चन यू शुड नो द शिफ्ट फॉर्म्यूला डेल्टा एक्स द शिफ्ट विच इज प्रोड्यूस्ड is given by or delta y actually not delta x delta y what is the formula it is thickness into mu minus 1 into capital d divided by small d that is number 1 this shift is given to be 30th bright fringe that means 30 times beta that means 30 times lambda capital d by small d because fringe width formula is lambda d by d so t into mu minus 1 into capital d by small d is this now you can clearly see few things will get cancelled like d d d d what is the uh, now we have to find refractive index yes perfect so therefore mu minus 1 mu minus 1 is 30 times of lambda divided by thickness take the thickness uh, value below that's what it is so mu is 1 plus 30 times lambda by t substitute the value you will get the answer uh, as 1.5 i believe just check this out if you get it as 1.5 yeah very simple question if you know the formula if you don't know the formula you will struggle a lot so please 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 remember this particular formula okay great now the last one is uh, modern physics now this part i am going to give you as homework i'll tell you why because most of the questions are purely theoretical just check this out most of the questions are purely theoretical you can easily go through the questions all these questions atoms nucleus okay they are very very theoretical plus uh, even semiconductors again very very theoretical all the things i have uh, already taught you in derivations or uh, you know in the graphical part so make sure that you download this pdf after the session is over and if you want to revise with us at any particular center feel free no memorize this map okay <laughs> or write it down take a screenshot at all these places there is vedantu learning center check out the link in the description box also that in the description box i'll upload relevant material as well as the pdf or uh, join the telegram channel that's the best way you will be getting the pdfs and also remember please check out the older sessions also the live or the recorded and watch it properly because graphs is done derivations is done today i have given you i think over hundreds of questions today you have done more than 100 questions today which are like sure shot and you will remember me you will thank me in the actual examination okay so i hope you all not just loved the session but also benefited from the session okay thank you so much uh, for joining in and recommend this channel to all your friends okay bye bye have a great day i will see you again soon take care assalamu alaikum